You've made it to another Rama encounter. I'm Dan from Pioneer Ministries, and we're so glad you're here. This is by divine appointment, and uh, I believe tonight God is going to touch you, encounter you, and speak to you powerfully. And uh, I hope you had a blessed day, and I hope you like my background here, just kind of showing some support for the ministry team. Pioneer Ministries has a wide variety of ministries, seven days a week, day and night and as well as prayer lines. So you can get connected with Pioneer and watch programming just like this one here all throughout the week. So I just encourage you to do that. My name is Dan. I'm just outside of Orlando, Florida. And uh, I'm just so glad to be with you tonight. We got some powerful prophetic ministers that are gonna come and be a blessing to you tonight. Amen. I just wanted to show you my screen. And uh, I, I like, uh, the more homey feeling right here. Amen. <laughs> yes, I feel more at home here, but uh, I've got a good computer now so I can I can pull up stuff like that. And uh, I got and I'm just blessed. I'm blessed to have this equipment here. Amen. And Nancy Hope is the first one here. Congratulations. We've got viewers on. Please like share the broadcast like at least come on. Let us know you're here. Say hello. Don't be shy. And uh, Brenda Metz, God bless you. Thank you for coming tonight. I believe you're in the right place at the Kairos time to, for God to speak something ex exactly that you need to hear in this day called today. Connie is in the house. Connie, God bless you this evening. And uh, we're just going to have a good time in the Lord. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we invite your Holy Spirit to take over the program right now. Holy Spirit, I ask you to flow, touch people, speak to people. Release your anointing right now. Remove burdens, destroy yokes, bring inspiration, and bring recharging to people who may be feeling weary. Father, Holy Spirit, just come, flow right now and touch your people. Heal them that are sick. And, and Holy Spirit, I just ask right now that you begin to touch the ministers and begin to use them as vessels to speak directly to these sons and daughters of yours out here. Amen. Jenna Sartor, God bless you. Thank you so much for being here this evening. Hallelujah. All the way from Vincent Strong Ministries. And she's a Floridian too. <laughs> Cliff Cherry, all the way from New Zealand. Powerful man of God, a pastor of a big church there. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. My lovely wife of 28 years, Donna Bailey. God bless you. Her. She's such a blessing. That's how we talk down here in the South. But I'm just excited. I'm bringing back a, a dear friend who's with me and Bishop Greg Gill's Ignite the Nations Ministries. And uh, I believe he's over in the Philippines right now and they're having, he's doing a 10 day circuit there. They're having a massive revival. Uh, Ignite the Nations, they're on the move. And, uh, and I'm just honored to be a part of that and this lady right here i'm bringing up dr premla mahavadan from uh, malaysia is is part of that network as well with bishop gill and uh i'm glad she's here tonight greet the people god bless you dr premla how are you i think she's got her i, I can't hear you baby there we go she, i did that i did I did that too on Paul Rice's earlier. It was at the end. <laughs> yes. Forget. Yeah. Yes, it's it's so good to be with you today, Dan. In this in this new year, my love to your wife, Donna, and yes. as as yes. usual, it, it's always a blessing uh, to be here with you to see what the Lord uh, will do in our midst today. So I'm really excited uh, to be with all of you. Just a quick shout out to my people who are tuning in from Malaysia. This this morning, it's our morning here. Um, the, my mom is here, Susila, my auntie, Alice, and um, one of my mentees, Dorothy, is here as well. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to see her here. So, um, yes, we're just excited as to what the Lord will do in our midst today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I also have another guest I'm trying to track down. And... Uh... You know, this this looks easier than it really is. <laughs> I, went, I was with Paul Rice at noon today, and it's just so, it's, it's so relaxing just to be a guest and let the moderator do the work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, you, you, 
Oh yeah, he's having technical difficulties. So as soon okay. as he gets sorted out, he'll uh, he'll come and okay. be a blessing tonight. But uh, it was powerful today. I, I, like I was armed with Paul Rice, and it's a little different kind of a program, Doctor Permo. There, I don't know if you've ever watched me on that, but I, I'm yes. more of into teaching the prophetic research, and I, I was sharing uh, some different things that the Lord was speaking to me prophetically. I went into a little more of the technology. You know, we truly are living in the last days. If all yes. this technology is not an indication yes. of times and seasons that we're in, and yes. uh, we talked yes. about. Some sensitive sensitive things today but I, I i really felt you know that we really need to know you know the bible says dr premo that we need to watch and pray yes but, but if you translate that in the greek it's it's really saying you need to walk watching we need to have an understanding of the times and seasons. we need to walk watching and and you know not get caught up in all that but yet be observant of it so we can position ourselves in the plan of God and be aware of what the enemy's devices are and what's going on out there in all the seven spheres of influence, you know, and uh, God is not only want us to be aware, but he wants us to go out and begin to battle for those areas of influence. Amen. As I was saying earlier, he not only wants us to possess the gates, but he wants mm. us to a man from the gates. And mm. uh, this was a little bit what I was talking about this morning, but yeah, it's so much, laid back when I could just be the guest, you know, uh, you know, it's just great. Let the other but, guy. That's, that's interesting then that you've already mentioned about the times and seasons, because I, I have uh, uh, that in my notes for today as well. So the Lord's obviously speaking loud and clear. So um, <laughs> that's, that's so true. Powerful. And yes, yes. And I'm, I want to introduce Wilmar and then I want you to go ahead and just share a little bit about that, please. Because yes, you're sir. right. It's 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 good that you know we're all in, in sync with what the spirit is doing. Yes, sir. Let's say hello to Mark of Love Ministries, Wilmar Fernando. Hello, God bless you. Navarro, <laughs> Navarro yes. Yeah, yes. The cold front is below 70 here. So yeah, <laughs> but uh <laughs> just blessed to have you tonight. How are you, man of God? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, yeah, I, I apologize. I had some technical difficulties. I had to change the headphones. One was working, the other one, yeah. I couldn't hear you guys. I was I got on when you guys started getting on, but I couldn't hear you guys. Yeah, amen. We're here now. We're, we're very happy. We have a Jennifer Butler, who's the founder and leader of the Pioneer Ministries. We a shout out to you. But, uh, Wilmer, it's, it's going to be a powerful night, and... Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have Dr. Premla open up, and she's got something she wants to share uh, about. We were just discussing. I don't know if you were hearing in the background about the the times and the seasons, and uh, and and you know, and she's gonna go ahead and just share a little bit, uh, and we're gonna have you come out and share a little bit what God is speaking to you. And then I I don't know about you if you all in agreement. Maybe we'll just begin to minister to people tonight that have came, gave their precious time to come listen. To the, for the voice of the Lord coming through our, our mouths. And I think we can tonight, we can begin to minister prophetically to some people tonight. That's the way I feel the Lord's leading. But first, go ahead and have your liberty. Dr. Premla, go ahead and, and share. Thank right you. Ahead. Thank you, Prophet Dan. And, and it's an honor to also uh, meet Prophet Wilma. Um, mm -hmm. what, what a blessing, what a blessing. So... I'm just going to quickly share what the Lord has given me uh, uh, for us today. And it, it is on my heart to begin this new year with you by offering an overview of, of what my spirit is prophetically picking up on during this time. Now, uh, Prophet Dan knows I, I minister daily to, to people all over the world. People call me for prayer, prophetic counsel. I, I also mentor a lot of people. I do physical ministry here. I travel. I, I also minister in the business world and I'm noticing a certain pattern and, and, and we, we can't be a gullible people. As the people of God, we need to be a discerning, discerning people, wise and discerning. We need wisdom and discernment. Do not be fooled by the facade, especially in this in this time and season that we're we're in this does not mean that we need to be a uh, critical people uh untrusting of everyone no that's that's not what i'm saying 
I'm saying that you need to balance everything with wisdom and discernment. We need to be a people who are led by the spirit and strongly rooted in the word or you will be deceived. What you need is not a New Year's resolution. You need divine revolution, revelation. Not resolution, but revelation. And it is revelation from the Lord that will bring resolution. And with this divine revelation that can only come from the Lord, it will also include divine strategies and solutions. Many of you are coming into some new things, a new season, uh, some new doors are beginning to open for you and you need revelation, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and discernment. And, and, and I'm also going to touch about the uh, 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 discerning the times and seasons later on, as Prophet Dan already mentioned. And this will help you properly navigate the new. If your prayer life is non-existent, I'm going to go back to some basics today that the Lord has put in my heart to speak to you about foundational things. If your prayer life is non-existent, uh, existent, or if you just spend five minutes a day praying and you're seeking for signs more than seeking the Lord in the secret place, then there's something wrong there. If you're seeking the voice of man more than you're seeking the voice of God, then there's something wrong there. You know, if, 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 if someone tried to come to me and give me a word, but I knew that their foundation wasn't solid or they lacked personal prayer life or I didn't know their fruits, you know, we got to test the fruits. We got to test the spirit behind things. It's what the Bible says. I would not count it as a credible source. I would be worried. Uh, you, 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 you need to weigh every word that is given to you. Take it back to prayer. You, you, you have accountability and responsibility to sit on it in prayer. You can't just say, oh, oh I made that wrong decision because so and so prophet uh, told me to. Where was your responsibility, your accountability, wisdom and discernment? If you lack these things, you should be asking why. The Bible says to ask for oh, wisdom. I ask for these things every day. I need it in order to be able to navigate my life well, to navigate my ministry, my business, my relationships, everything really. You know, now don't get me wrong. It's good to ask the Lord for confirmation. In fact, it's biblical. We all need that. We need to know that something is absolutely of the Lord. I myself do this. It's okay to ask for people to pray for us uh, and with us. Uh, I, I, I have a, a team of intercessors that, that I go to for prayer cover. It's okay to seek prophetic counsel. Uh, being a prophet myself, I, I, I do seek counsel from my mentors, from other trusted prophets. Prayer support is okay, but make sure you're doing it in balance and in wisdom. Make sure these things don't precede your own prayer life, your own discernment. God speaks to all his children. The Bible says, my sheep heareth my voice. If you would spend time with him in the secret place and be consistently doing so, consistency is key. Your ability to hear will sharpen. Your ability to see will sharpen. Your discernment will sharpen. You know, it's okay to make mistakes while you're still learning. This is why you have mentors. You have pastors. You know, prophets have a real vital role in the kingdom too. And God speaks through them. They are his mouthpiece. But as there's, there's no such thing as just relying on the prophet without you cultivating your own walk and relationship with the Lord. If you're not growing, you should ask why. You see, a good leader will train you and help you and teach you as to how you, you can hear the voice of the Lord independently. 
for yourself while closely walking with you, a good leader while watching over you, pointing out any blind spots. You know, this is what I do with my mentees and I know Prophet Dan and Prophet Wilma can, can relate with this. This is what we do. We build people up. We empower them to, 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 to send them out so that they can multiply. We don't train people how to be dependent on us. We don't cripple them. We don't control. We don't manipulate. We don't keep them. They're not ours. They are God's. So I'm giving you keys today. Keys, keys about the importance of revelation and discernment coupled with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Are you spending time with the Lord in the secret place every day? Are you reading his word every day? Are you spending time uh, in worship? You know, after receiving confirmation, there comes a time to put a faith into action. You will need to take some faith steps into moving towards your destiny. You can't wait for things to fall from heaven. God needs you to partner with him. Some of these faith steps may be uncomfortable. It may stretch you. It may require you to go out of your comfort zone. It will require obedience and trust. But it will birth your promise. Many of you are birthing promises in this at this point in time. For context, I'll quickly go, let's quickly look at, at, a, at a reference in the Bible uh, between Jesus and some Pharisees, Matthew 16 and 1. The Pharisees and the Sadducees came up and putting Jesus to the test, they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. But he replied to them, watch, when it is evening, you say it will be fair weather for the sky is red. And in the morning, there will be a storm today for the sky is red and threatening. You know how to discern the appearance of the sky. But are you unable to discern the signs of the times? An evil and adulterous generation wants a sign. And so a sign will not be given to it except the sign of Jonah. And he left them and he went away. You see, this encounter aptly portrays what has befallen the modern prophetic movement today. The Pharisees were notorious sign seekers. As we know from Jesus and, and Paul elsewhere, sign seeking is an attitude of unbelief that not only pre precludes true faith, but blocks true perception of spiritual reality standing before it you know in this scenario jesus tells the pharisees their quest for uh, uh, the particular signs it's a vain wine it's blinding uh, blinding them to spiritually uh, 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 obvious things they didn't need a sign to prove what was in front of them you see it was revelation that they needed to be able to see what was just in front of them they just needed to exercise basic discernment and discernment is available to everyone. Therefore, the only sign they wouldn't get or they would get rather is the one they were not looking for and wouldn't understand why because there was a lack of revelation and a lack of discernment. With exacting precision, this encounter explained what has become uh, of the gift of prophecy in our time. The church has turned the gift of prophecy into a gift of sign seeking. You know, <laughs> I, I'm going to probably step on some toes now. There's no such thing as popcorn prophecy. What is that? Who coined that term? We're not in the movies. The prophetic is not a show. The prophetic is not yeah. for selfish gain. We have to have reverence for the Lord and the things of God. Come on. And that includes the prophetic. How we navigate Come on. it. How we steward it. God shall not be mocked. Yes. We as, as, 
as the prophets, as the leaders, we're accountable. You as the people, as the children of God, you're accountable. God shall not be mocked. Yes. You see, you see people who do not have prophetic vision seek out prophecies to tell them what is going on. When they should be developing their own prophetic sense. That sense is available to us all through the broad framework of the scriptures pertaining to the immutable process and patterns of God. So God, come on. patterns already clearly outlaid for us and which cannot be broken. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying prophecy is not important. Uh, I'm a prophet myself. I was born to prophesy just like Prophet Dan, just like Prophet Wilma. In fact, I was even prophetic as a child. But if we run from prophet to prophet and conference to conference to get another prophecy, uh, uh, a.k.a. another sign, yeah. That will tell us that what we want to hear. We, we, we really have to evaluate what's going on there. You know, don't get me wrong. I, I always seek out the voice of God in everything I do when I'm in different situations, when there are challenges, uh, when I need answers and solutions. Of course, I seek out the voice of God. I also seek out wise counsel and ask my prayer intercessors to pray for me. So that's not what I'm talking about here today. I'm talking about the dangers of sign seeking and making the prophetic an idol. What you need is fresh revelation and discernment to be able to sift out the fake and know the genuine. I'm telling you, this is really important in this day and age. There's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of strange, strange fire even happening uh, 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 um, over social media today. You need to come test on these things. You the need spirit, to come these on. Things. Sift, sift it out. I'm telling you, there's a lot of uh, 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 convincing things out there, and a lot is going on. Come on. Even the devil can prophesy. Your Bible come says on. so. It's there. And you don't want to be opening yourself up to something that does not come from the Spirit of God just because come on. It's accurate or convincing. Now, the key to discerning correctly in the age of increasing deception is having the knowledge and understanding of the Word of God. That should be your God, solid come on. foundation. We must, we must have a lifestyle of prayer, studying His Word, being in close relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We must be full of His Spirit, filled with His Spirit, and be led by the Spirit. Chasing after prophetic dreams is another thing that can be dangerous. These are things I'm, I'm speaking to you about these things today because I'm observing this, you, you, you know, in, in, in ministry, uh, 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 um, uh, people are coming to me confused, you know. Prophet, say, chasing after prophetic dreams alone can be dangerous and it can lead you on the wrong path looking for the wrong things. I've seen people do this time and time again. You need revelation and understanding and knowledge again. Now, I've been a prophetic dreamer for years. The Lord has shown me many things ahead of time through dreams uh, which have accurately come to pass. He has given me solutions through dreams. I've had angelic visitations through dreams. So I'm not discounting these things, but you see, there are no shortcuts. There are no quick fixes. You need to be spending time with the Lord in the secret place. And there needs to be that consistency. And this is how you will grow. This is how you will be sharpened in your discernment. This is how revelation can come. This is how you will become more attuned. Attuned to the voice of the Lord and more sensitive to his spirit. This is how you will develop even as a prophetic dreamer or intercessor or prophetic person. I just feel that uh, 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 there are quite a few prophetic people here on this broadcast today. Uh, 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 there's a prophetic gift in you and it can manifest in different ways. And if you don't even spend time in prayer and worship and reading his word, those of you who are filled with the Holy Ghost, you need to be praying in the spirit every day. You need to be strengthening your spirit, man. In fact, all his children should be filled with his spirit. 
with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, but that's a different topic for a different day. So how do you expect to be sensitive to his voice, to his spirit? You cannot ride on someone else's walk, someone else's prayer life, someone else's relationship. I see many people interpreting their dreams and making wrong decisions as a result. How will you know the difference between the voice of your flesh, the voice of the enemy, and the voice of God? As a prophetic people, correct interpretation is key. Check your filters. I, I, I always say this. If, if, you, if, if you still need healing, inner healing and deliverance, especially from trauma, or if you need to be further renewed in your mind, you need the Lord to break old and wrong mindsets. It's best that you look into, into these things as this can cause you to wrongly filter what you're seeing and hearing and how you're perceiving. Yeah. Through undealt wounds, trauma can prevent growth. It can be a block. And all this will spill into all areas of your life, especially your relationships. Some of you could be held captive in your minds your emotions but god says i want you to be free today i want to free you today i want the contaminants to go i'm cleansing your filters he is healing you today do not be impatient do not be premature when it comes to inner healing and deliverance sometimes it can be a process i feel i feel to encourage someone here sometimes it can be a process but trust God in the process. Do not prematurely launch. Trust him. Complete the process. Allow, allow him to process you. Come through the fire like gold. And, and you, 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 you watch the authority and dominion as a result that you come out with. Listen to me. God is getting people unstuck from Egypt today, especially Egypt mindsets. It begins with a change of mind. You are going to be delivered and your mind is going to be renewed. This, is all, this also includes wrong alliances. We need to discern what and who is not healthy for us. What is toxic? This is where I, 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 I put my foot down, where there is no integrity. Or the minute I, I find out something or someone is not of integrity, that, that's where I, I draw the line, boundaries. I have to guard the anointing. I cannot take everyone with me to where I'm going. We have to sift the wheat between the tares. You have to be discerning in order to be able to do this. Something can present itself as good and godly. And trust me, it can be very convincing. But what does the Bible ask us to do? Test the spirit and the fruit. God has given me warning dreams about certain people and situations. It does not mean I make it public. It's for me to exercise discretion and put the boundaries in place. You are not to open yourself up to just about anything and everything. Check the doctrines, probe deep and be led of the spirit. Do not blindly succumb to men and all their whims and fancies. I believe in honoring and loving people people but i also believe in being as gentle as a dove and wise as a serpent and why does the bible say sometimes we need to dust our feet and walk away that too is in the bible so balance people of god balance exactly. discernment there's yeah. so many counterfeits out there. And the Lord is calling you up higher today. I'm almost done. Just like he, he did with John in the island of Patmos. You see, Matthew 13, 10 to 17. When, when Jesus spoke in parables, Jesus' disciples came and said to him, why do you use parables when you speak to the crowds? And Jesus replied, because they haven't received the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. But you have. For those who have will receive more and they will have more than enough. But as for those who don't have, 
Even the little they have will be taken away from them. This is why I speak to the crowds in parables. Although they see, they don't really see revelation. And although they hear, they don't really hear or understand wisdom, knowledge, understanding, discernment. What Isaiah prophesied has become completely true for them. You will hear to be sure, but never understand. You will certainly see, but never recognize what you are seeing. For these people's senses have become calloused. The scripture says, is verse 15. And they've become hard of hearing and they've shut their eyes so that they won't see with their eyes or hear with their, uh, their ears. I'm not talking with hum about human understanding or understand with their minds. It's the mind of God and change their hearts and live and, and lives that I may heal them. Look at what the, the scripture says. And, and, and happy are your eyes because they see. 16, verse 16. Happy are your eyes, your ears, because they hear. I assure you that many prophets and righteous people wanted to see what you see and hear what you hear. But they didn't. This is what scripture says. And one more quick one. Uh, uh, Proverbs 25. What does it say? It is the glory of God to conceal, to conceal a certain matter. And to search out a matter is the glory of kings. Who are the kings here? We, we're kings here on earth. And as the heavens are high, the earths are deep. So the hearts of kings are unsearchable. So God conceals certain matters for us to search out. Well, how are we going to do it without revelation? Revelation is key. We go searching after all these other things, but I tell you, revelation is key. It boils down again to revelation. You cannot move forward without it. I just feel the in the the Holy Spirit so strongly right now. So strongly. It is revelation Come that on. counters deception. Revelation sets a uh, uh, sheds light to darkness. It tells us how we can pray. It tells us how to move uh, uh, into the open doors. It's just not, oh God, you opened the, the door. How am I going to successfully move into it and get to the other side and see the fullness of that? How am I going to manage things and people and relationships to navigate? I need revelation from the Lord. And, and very quickly, we also need to be able to discern the times and the seasons. Timing is so important. The, the Bible talks about the anointing of Issachar. It's one thing to receive a prophecy or a promise from the Lord, but we also need to discern his timing. There's an appointed time. When, it, when is it time to pray and wait and watch? When is it time to make faith moves? Things done prematurely can be dangerous. You see, although mm -hmm. God spoke some things to us, it doesn't mean we do it now. It doesn't mean it's for now. It could be. Or it may not be. We need to know his timing, his will, his way and approach, not ours. Not our way of perceiving. We need to perceive through his eyes. I always pray this every day. Lord, increase me. Increase me in these things. Help me to perceive correctly because these things will affect my decision making. And will, will, will prevent me from making mistakes. And if you don't have an intimate relationship with the Lord, if, if you don't have that consistency, how are you going to be able to perceive correctly? We shouldn't uh, make quick judgments and come to quick conclusions. Come on. Uh, sit mm -hmm. on things. Sit. This society mm -hmm. is such a quick fix society. Learn how to sit on things with the Lord in prayer. I do this even even in the in 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 the business decisions that I have to make. I yeah. sit on it with the Lord. God, which door do I walk into? Which door do you not want me to walk into? Which yeah. person to be in alliance with and which person not to be in alliance with? Yeah. You know, not every good thing is necessarily a God thing. So the two keys I would like to release to you today is revelation and discernment, which includes knowledge and understanding. And this is how you'll be able to navigate and be able to navigate well. You know, uh, we, we are here and we're going to minister to you today. I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing 
what the Lord is going to speak through Prophet Wilma. And we are going to minister to you and prophesy to you today. We are going to do that. But but Prophet Dan, if it's okay, I'm just feeling to just, just pray an impartation first for, for an increase in wisdom and knowledge and revelation and discernment. Some yeah, of that, you are going to... Yes, yeah, sir. And, and Dr. Prema, I was sensing that you were to pray that the veils that come off people's eyes of their yes. spiritual... Oh, come on. Yeah, you know what? And, and then I'm going to Prophet Wilmar after you. Go ahead, please, guys. Take this over. Move with this. Man, you're we're, you're we're, my message. Go ahead. <laughs> we're all Go in, ahead. we're all in one mind and one accord. I know I can okay, tell we, 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 we live in different continents. We're in the spirit together today. Prophet Dan, you you spoke about the veil. In fact, um, my my spiritual daughter daughter uh, Dorothy, who's here, can attest to this. Just over the weekend, we had a Bible study, and we spoke about the veil and how uh, the, the veil was parted, and how how what that means for us today. There's a veil that needs to come oh off. There's a cloud of confusion that's going to lift. You're going to wake up, and the light bulb is going to to come on, so to speak. You are going to become unstuck. Come on. Chains are going to break, and limitations will be removed. Rebe shondo lokoto shia. You are going to come forward. You are all going to overcome in Christ, no matter what the obstacle, people of God. No matter what it's looking like. I hear God saying, "I'm coming in with my glory." I'm coming in with my power. I'm coming in with my joy like never before. I'm bringing in a shifting or a sifting. I'm shifting things so that the things that are no longer necessary will be sifted out. That includes people that are no longer necessary. Alliances that are no longer necessary. Alliances that have become in fact toxic. The burdens that are no longer necessary, the activities that are no longer necessary, the thoughts, the thoughts. Oh, Rashid Tolobokama, over minds today, God. Rashid Tolobokama, the power of God touch minds today. Break people free from oppressive thoughts. There's a spirit of heaviness that is lifting. Those of you who got those constantly racing thoughts, those depressive and oppressive thoughts that tries to come on down. If some of you are not even able to sleep well at night because your mind just won't shut down, the Lord is touching that today. I release the power of God to you. Your minds be healed. Your minds be renewed. In fact, there is a complete reset and a reboot that that is being released to you right now. Gain clarity like never before. It is time for shifting. It is time for sifting. And, and it is time for your unveiling. So Father, in the name of Jesus. Come on. God, I feel your heart for your people today, for your bride. The Lord says you are the apple of my eye. And I am lifting the veil. I have parted the veil for you. It is not my will that you continue to walk in deception and confusion. You are my children. You have authority in the name of Jesus. So right now, I pray over you for clear discernment. I pray that you will increase in wisdom, in knowledge and understanding. In discernment, you will be a discerning people. You will not be taken advantage of anymore, Rabbi Shokoboho. I even hear, even where your finances go, you know, giving is a kingdom principle. I have always practiced giving. How, oh, but you need to couple it with wisdom. Even where your finances go, you will no longer be taken advantage of, says the Lord. Hey, Rabbi Shokoboho. Some of you are going to have dreams even this night. 
There's going to be there's going to be angels of the Lord dispatched to you in the night season, bringing a clear message to you to show you how to move forward in those very places that you're stuck in. Some of you are needing divine solutions as to how to move into the door that the Lord has already opened for you. The Lord says, as you draw now to me. I will show you how to win that battle. You see, we win those battles on our knees, in the spirit, in prayer. I will release divine solutions to you for your business. There's some people here that are needing, I hear relocation. You're needing to relocate for different reasons. Uh, uh, and this is the Lord's will for you. I will release provision. I will remove the blocks. You will move in clarity and revelation uh, like never before. So, Father, I thank you for this. I speak this impartation over all of us. God, I need it too. Over all of us today. I receive this too. There is anointing. There is such anointing and impartation for revelation. Some of you, there's going to be downloads, sudden downloads. <laughs> And you would have gotten that solution that will get you Come unstuck. On. That will get you unstuck. God will do it for you. So I, I just hand over to Prophet Dan and Prophet Wilma in the name of yeah. Jesus. Yes, yeah, just, just lift up Come your on. hand. Just receive the fragrance, the oil of the Lord. It's in the atmosphere. Please post in the comments if... If, if you've been touched by the Spirit of God tonight, if you felt a manifestation, uh, something lift off of you, some heaviness or some sickness or something lift off your body as she released that anointing. Amen. Uh, you know, you know, I've been saying all year long, the Lord spoke to me and said, 2020, 20, 2023 is the year to track with the three. It's interesting that it's 123, 23 tonight. Amen. And, and I totally forgot to read Psalms 23 at the beginning, but you know what? God is having his way tonight. He has, see, I came in with a plan, but God has a better one. Amen. Matter of fact, he knows the plan Come on. He's toward us. Amen. And so I like when he implements his plans, they're a lot better than my plans. But he said, this is 2023. It's the year to track with the three, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And he said, this is a year to like never before to track with my spirit. And you're hearing, it's amazing how I'm hearing it come out of the prophet's mouth. Uh, as I get ready to go to prophet Wilmar, um, I'm just hoping before Dr. Prema goes tonight, when she gets her next segment, that she can talk about, about this rebooting. When you said reboot, that was a rhema. And I, I feel like you need to talk to some people about how sometimes we get out of whack and why the Lord will come and reboot us from time to time. Uh, that's for a little while, but I just feel like let's go to a prophet, Omar. Hey, thanks. For, she was, the anointing was on her, bro. I, I had to. I had to just let her roll. You you know what I'm saying. I knew I, you were I, too. So. I understand. <laughs> you know, now I you, understand God was flowing through her. You got to learn to receive more than anybody when you're a minister. See, you yeah. can't pour, you can't pour out of the tank, right? So, Prophet Wilmer, take it away, bro. This God bless you all the hey. way from Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> That's I, want to, I want to say this is like God. God is having us discern the times and the seasons like never before. He wants us to pay attention to everything that's happening around us, to know our surroundings and everything that's happening, right? For everything on this earth, there's a time and a season. God has a timing and a season. He has a purpose for everything. Like the sons of Issachar, they discerned the times, they knew the times, and they knew what to do in those times, right? So God has brought me to the scripture, and other people have shared it. This before the year started. And it's, it's 2 Corinthians chapter uh, uh, 2, verse 18. But we all, all of us, right, with unveiled face, Beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord as being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord. 
This is a year where the glory of God is going to say, this is the year that the glory of God is going to be unveiled at a greater measure. People are going to encounter the glory of God. There's different measures of the glory of God. There's the fear of the Lord. There's the encounter of the face of God, right? Because that word, is, uh, the, the glory of God has to do with the panim, the face. You have a face-to-face -face encounter like Mo Moses speak to God face-to-face. So people are going to have encounters with the face of God. People are going to encounter, there's going to be miracle signs and wonders where God's going to do things for people in the glory of God. But God is ca causing his people to be like Moses. There's a thing that, show me your glory. We're in the time of going from Moses to Joshua. This is a year of Joshua or Yeshua, Jesus, right? From Moses, the law, to going to Jesus, the revelation, because Jesus brought the revelation of the sonship to his children. He brought it, you see, it says, he says that, he told Peter, flesh and blood that I will read this to you, but my father who is in heaven. So that, it, you're talking about revelation, right? I want to go piggyback on the revelation. Revelation is given to the sons and the daughters of God. It is given to those, he says, I hide this from the wise and the prudent, and I revealed it to the babes. God is calling us to be like the Bereans, to test everything that's being spoken, to go into the word and to make sure that what's being preached is coming from the word of the Lord. God's calling us to, to discern the spirits, to test the spirits, to see whether they are God, because God wants to make sure that I've been seeing this a lot. There's been a spirit of deception that's been going on throughout the body, whether it been through visions or, or dreams, or, that it's been happening and you see it everywhere. People have been talking about it. You've been seeing even teachings been coming out of, uh, from it. You know, God has been wanting us because we're in a time where the sermon is going to overcome deception. I'm going to repeat that again. The sermon of spirits and the sermon is going to overcome the deception because the sermon has to do with recognizing, acknowledging, discerning, judging, weighing, measuring. You know, there's different levels to, to the sermon to have a sharpness. Uh, the Bible says in, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, that the word of God is a living and active word, a double-edged sword that penetrates the bone and the marrow, that it discerns the, the thoughts and the intents of the heart, and it divides a soul asunder. But the next verse says, no creature remains hidden through the word of God. It's revealed. The word of God, that's why when people are preaching, devils start manifesting. Come on, Lord. When pre people start preaching and it's the, the infallible word of God, when it's the true word of the Lord, because the word of God is sure, the word of the Lord is pure. So, so God causes, the sword starts to cut. It starts to go deep. It starts to bring deliverance. It starts to bring a revelation. Because this is a year where God is resetting things into order and he's resetting the time. Because some of us have moved out of God's time. Some of us have moved ahead of God, right? And this is the revelation I get. When you move ahead of God, you're going to end up waiting, okay? That's why some of you are waiting, because you moved ahead of God. For example, if you go to your doctor early, you're going to end up waiting for your appointment. So there's, there's, there's a timing of the Lord that when you when you arrive at the right time, the timing of the Lord. The Bible says in, in the book of Ecclesiastes that God has made everything beautiful in his timing. So there's things that come into order. There's things that come in, into place as you step into his timing. So this is the year that God's causing us to step into the timing. This is this is something with this year with the timing of God. Because God spoke to me about knowing him as the eternal God. Understanding him that he's the eternal God. He's outside of time. He manifests in our time through the kairos of God. We live in the chronos, but he manifests in the kairos. When Jesus will come, every time that Jesus came was the kairos of God. It was the timing of the Lord. And there's things the Lord wants to do in his timing over your life. In the story of Lazarus, you see that it, it, it seemed like uh, Jesus was late, but Jesus was right on time. Jesus does not come in your time. He comes in his time. His timing is perfect. He knows what he's doing in your life, and he's ordering your steps. But you have to step into what he's calling you. He's calling, any of you telling you to come forth. He's telling Peter, come out the boat. He's telling him, come out the boat. He's, he's, is, this you? is this you, Lord? Yes, it is. Come forth. Come forth. Step on the water. Keep your eyes on me. Do not look to the storms. Do not look to the left or the right. Because God is causing faith to arise. Even as, as the word was being preached uh, through, through the woman of God, there was faith arising within the people to believe and to understand. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 19, verse 2, that the Bible says that zeal without knowledge is not good. And those who have hasty feet make a lot of mistakes or sin a lot. That's why many times we miss the mark because we go ahead of God. But God is connecting this hour zeal with wisdom, zeal with knowledge to, to know how to move because that's why how Joshua was able to, to possess the land because God told him to possess the land, but he needed the wisdom. Why? Because you see Moses imparted wisdom. Moses prayed for, for, for Joshua and he imparted wisdom. 
because because Joshua was a bold warrior. Joshua was going to go possess the land. And in order for you to possess the land, you can't be afraid of the giants of the land. I'm going to say that again. In order for you to possess the land, you can't be afraid of the giants of the land. God's called you. This is a year the giants live. I saw Prophet Dantrell, he posted something about that. He re recently posted about the eagles and the giants and the, and the game and how the eagles overcame the giants. And this is a year that the prophetic or the revelation is going to cause the giant slaying. It's going to it's going to cause the things to happen. Things are going to fall into place. Things are going to start to fall into place because there's a revelation, there's an understanding, there's a vision. Without vision, my people perish or 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 they they become still, they become stagnant, they become stuck. So, the, so when there's a prophetic word, the Bible says in the book of Hosea that through a prophet there was multiplied visions and similitudes or parables. So, the, so when, the, when there's a prophetic word going forth, there's revelation. Even as I'm speaking, people are going to start to have visions. God's going to start to download things. Things are going to be dropped in the spirit. Things are going to be stirred up. Inspiration is going to come to many of you. Even as I'm speaking, because there's a spirit of revelation that's going forth. Because prophetic people release the spirit of revelation. The spirit of revelation, which is the testimony of Jesus Christ. The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. And as we're testifying about the Lord, the spirit of prophecy is being on that. So the spirit of prophecy is being released. But God wants us to understand we got to move in step with him. And we got to move in rhythm with him. Sometimes he's going to, it's like a dance. You got to know how to move. And, and, and sometimes it's going to be slow. Sometimes it's going to be fast. You got to move. You got to let him lead the dance. And you got to move with him, move and step with him. Don't step on his toes. Don't step on his toes. Don't, you know, let the Lord lead you. Let the Lord make, God wants to do many things for many people here, but you got to get out of the way. God wants to do things for you. He wants to make a way, but you got to get out the way. He told Moses, he said, why are you crying out to me? Exodus chapter 14, verse 15. Why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to move forward. This is a year of moving forward. One thing I posted in the beginning of this year, this is not a year that you need another prophecy. It's a year to start moving forward. Faith without action, faith without works is dead. But you must work your faith to see those miracles. You must work your faith to see those breakthroughs, to see what God has for you. you got to move by faith. And faith is bold. Faith is in your face. The Bible talks about that faith has a sound in the book of Romans. God wants us to walk by faith and not by sight. So that, 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 that means that we have to be led by the Spirit of God. As much as led by the Spirit of God, those are the sons of God. So sometimes God's going to tell you, go to the store, go to this church, go call this brother, go call this sister. And God's going to lead you by his Spirit. You might not know what you're doing, but his Spirit is leading. The Bible says you don't know where the wind is coming. You don't know if it's coming from the left or the right. So God's going to lead you and move you by his Spirit. But you got to be in tune with the Spirit. you got to move with the Spirit. you got to let the Lord lead you. God is speaking to many people. Because there's things that he's, he's, he's preparing his people. Something is coming upon the earth. Something is coming and we need to be prepared. I know many people, God has been speaking to people. In the beginning of this year, God brought me to Joel chapter 2 and chapter 3. It says, prepare the army, sound the trumpet in Zion, blow the trumpet in Zion. And God is calling his army to arise. And it says it there. It says, Stay in your lane. That's another thing. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Don't get in the way of what, uh, what, what, what an, another person is doing in the kingdom of God. You got to work together. You got to know how to flow together. You got to know when to step back and let the person speak or, 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 or when to step in and share wisdom, but go back into your position. You got to move and step with each other because we are the body of Christ. We have many functions. We're all different. It's our difference that makes the difference. It's who we are. We're all different. We're all unique. We have a way of speaking. Some some have more soft-spoken. Some people are more bold. Some people are more loud. But God uses all those things. God uses all those things to minister to his body. But we got to be you. You must remain to be you. Don't try to be the next hoo-hoo. Be you. Be yourself. Be the one that the Lord uh, fearfully and wonderfully made. He made you to be you. It's your uniqueness that's going to stand out. It's your uniqueness that's going gonna, gonna to bring power. It's gonna, your uniqueness is going to bring deliverance. It's, it's your uniqueness. you got to be who God called you to be. Yes, like the pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. you got to move by the Spirit of God because God does not want us to chase Bible says that that the that the Jews seek a sign and the the Greeks seek what wisdom, and the Bible says that they, they wanted a sign. And what was the sign that was given to them? The sign of Jonah, as Jonah was uh, three days and three nights in the belly of, of, of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be. And God is speaking to many people 
that they have to understand the sign. You don't need another sign. You need to listen to his voice. You need to hear his voice. And, and I'm going to say this as well, because you said something very key. In the story of, uh, of uh, in Samuel, when, when Samuel had died, Saul would stop hearing the voice of God. Saul became a, a madman. He went to consult, uh, come on, he went to consult a spiritist because he became desperate because the, the voice of God was not even coming to him through the prophets. So he wanted to start, be careful seeking a spiritist because they open up to a familiar spirit. What came out of the ground? The spirit of Samuel, but it wasn't the spirit of Samuel. That was a familiar spirit that spoke. That was a familiar spirit that spoke. Come on. And this is an hour where we gotta discern the familiar spirit, and we cannot be familiar. That's another thing I have to say. Because a prophet's the honor his own home in his own country. We cannot be familiar with people. We've got to esteem others above ourselves. We cannot be familiar because familiarity breeds contempt. Familiarity causes division. Familiarity causes you not to honor someone or submit yourself to another person. You know, I don't understand that. You have to remember that, yes, there's a human side to the individual, but there's a mantle on the individual. There's an anointing that God has placed under that individual, and you must respect and honor what God has put over that person. But at the same time, I have to say this. Also, what I'm seeing in the body of Christ is this is the hour where uh, you said three, right, man of God, uh, uh, Prophet Dan? I'm going to say this. This is, a, this is a time of the three-fold core strength. Three-fold core strength cannot be easily broken. And so, so and that's for husbands and wives. With God, you're going to be able to move in the storms that are that are going through right now, and in, in marriages and everything. Because with with the Lord, He's holding our hands. God is causing us to move forward. God's bringing direction. God's bringing instruction. But also in the body of Christ is is the threefold core strand in the sense of counsel. You mentioned about counsel. The Bible says the Lord reveals His secret counsel to those who fear Him. So there's a counsel that comes. The Bible says you wage warfare, and the safety. Through counsel, God, this is a year of counsel. God spoke to me about counsel. And counsel, when you study that word counsel, it has to do with the, the elders, but it has to do with purpose. So counselors are going to help you get to your purpose, get to your yeah. destiny. These yeah. counsel, people who are counselors, these are people who are seasoned in the things of God. They are the yes. elders. They are the wise. They are the experience. They are the knowledge. They have the knowledge. They have the faith. They've gone through things that you already, you're already, you're not there yet, but you might be walking into those things. So it's important to have right counsel around you. It's, it's, it's okay. It's important to also receive correction. The Bible says the child that receives correction yes. is considered wise. It might not feel good at at the moment, but that, that correction is going to bring a fruit. Another thing I want to say is that there's, there's there's many people who are producing fruit, but it's not edible. Let me say that again. There's fruit in the natural, right, that you can grab. It looks like it's fruit, and you bite it. You can't bite it. It's plastic. But there's, there's people who are bearing fruit in the body of Christ, which are authentic, the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, peace, patience, joy, long-suffering, kindness, gentleness, meekness, and a sound mind. The, yeah. But the Lord wants us to bear fruit. It says that you abide in him. He will cause you to prune those things away, right? And then he'll cause you to bear more fruit. You're bearing fruit. And then you ask anything in his name, and it will be done for you. But you got to pray according to his will. Bible says he that we're confident is that he hears us in the time that we're praying to him. We ask anything according to his will, that he is going to do it. But the time, the time is running. Time is running. You cannot run ahead of time. But God is also redeeming the time. The Bible says we do not walk as the foolish, but we walk as the wise because God is redeeming the time. Jesus. God is redeeming the time. So that means that God's going to redeem some things for you, some things that you might have put to the back burner as you start to be obedient to, to what God is telling you to do. God's going to bring those things together. He's going to bring the connection. He's going to bring the solutions together. Yeah. Prophet Dan, I know you want to share something. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I, do you want to share something? <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just probing the spirit. And, and, and what I sensed him say is, is this, that, he says, he told me to become a point of contact because he wants both of you to take a couple minutes and minister to me, but you're really ministering to the ministers out here. There's, there's a little bit of feedback there, but they're, they're, the ministers out here have been under attack. The Lord just was talking in my ear, and that's why I was kind of reacting. And yeah. and, if, and if I fall asleep and listen to this sermon and, and or get in the spirit, about 30 names go by. <laughs> We've got a big crowd here, so I've got my hands full with the thread, but understand that god he's wanting to release an anointing to his ministers listen yeah. these guys are absolutely right they're hearing from god i'm hearing stuff that i talked about in other broadcasts and it's all confirmation to me but the bottom line is this and i say this on on prophetic flow 
pull on Paul Rice's all the time. You're either being led or you're misled. Amen. Yeah. And 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 if you trust your own intellect, you're 50-50. Yeah. I mean, this is the year to track with the spirit. You've got to be led more than ever right now. You can't take things at face value, especially in the time of deception that Jesus clearly warned us about. This is the time to, to track with the spirit. Mm. However, however, the bigger picture is, it's, this is all about relationship at the end of the day. I mean, the problem with the prophetic is the prophetic. And I've said that for years and people yeah. give me those googly eyes when I say it, like they think I'm, I'm, I'm tri tripping or drinking some hard cider or something in the back. No, <laughs> I think about it. It, it is because God says, I'm not building my house on a house of gifts. The yeah. gifts are important. Thessalonians says, do not despise prophecies. And I want you, one of you, before we go tonight, to talk to that person on here who doesn't understand the prophetic, maybe like somebody who's been doing it for a while mm -hmm. and they're skeptical of it. But yet there's got to be, like you said, Dr. Premo, balance. There's got to be a balance and everything has to come after the, of the foundation of a relationship at God. Everything. Yes. Is, it's the altar of God is the axle that turns the wheel. I always say, and yeah. then it's the meeting place with God. Everything comes out of the relationship with God. If you're out seeking gifts or seeking even messages and try just to let that feed you and you're substituting that for a time, a merry time that's sitting at the master's feet and breaking the alabaster box and crying those tears of your, the hardships of your life, not to your neighbor, but to the Lord himself. Listen, this, this mm -hmm. guy loves you more than you can understand. And you've got one of the greatest gifts besides eternal life. One of the greatest gifts is access. Hebrew says now because we come on. Do the mm -hmm. of Jesus. Boldly, come on. To the throne mm -hmm. of what? Grace to, to obtain yeah. health. Grace. You have access. But see, the enemy will get us busy or we'll get it. We'll just stay too busy. And we don't prioritize that time at the altar. And then what we do, we try to compensate and go and get go to our brothers and gifted brothers and sisters to try to hear God for our life when really we should be hearing it for himself. Because that's what a relationship is, right? My wife and I, I talk and then I shut up and I listen. You know, yeah. she talks and then she be quiet and listens. This is the essence of a components of a relationship. And see, what Come I'm going to say real quick is when I'm on a broadcast like this, I'm just checking off things I've already heard, stuff I've ministered. You can go back and watch them yourself. Com confirmations. Uh, I'm checking them off. Uh, and it's not about, oh, boy, I got one right. It's not about this. Not how I, can I make these course corrections, these reboots in my journey, in my Come life, on. keep my feet in alignment, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't get easier when you get me down 25, 30 years down the road ministering. I've ministered in person. <laughs> In, in, in situations you only dream of. And then I go back waiting tables a few days later. But understand, it, it's about tracking with, it's about relationship. It's about, you're continually Come making on. course corrections. You don't get a graduation diploma from the school of God and then you're done. That's it. I don't need any more ministry. Come on. I don't need any more of the word. Mm. I, don't need, I don't need to, you know, every, I'm all good now. No, it, it's a process, ladies and gentlemen. And, and just like your computer, it needs updates and it needs reboots and, and, and restarts. And, and this is what, because this journey is, is hard. Matter of fact, it's so hard that Jesus himself wouldn't do anything until the Holy Spirit empowered him. Think about it. He was Come on. Years, the son of the God himself in flesh. And he wouldn't do one thing until the John pulled him out of that water and the Holy Ghost Come came on. out. And what makes you think you can do anything without the empowerment of the Spirit? So we got to be tracking with this very Spirit. Come into, then we come into true partnership with the Trinity, amen, and we begin to make advance his kingdom and get some stuff done for God, amen. But, the, but, but your personal journey, you've got to continually be coming here. And I come here in my mind, you know what I want to say right now to both of these guys? I want to be the point of contact. And that's what the Lord said to me. Because I said to the Lord in my mind, I, I really need some ministry in myself, but I'm here for the people. And, 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 but I, so the Lord says, why don't you do this? Why don't you let them take two minutes to both of them speak to you, Dan, but I want this to be a ministry to ministers. And, and I just sense that you're, you're going to release an anointing that's going to break a bunch of things off of ministers. I, I sense you're going to not only break demonic things off of all of us ministers, yeah, come you're going to be going to break yeah. some things off of us. You're going to break some things that maybe we're not seeing totally correctly. See, you got the first thing you got to yes, do is not, oh boy, God uses me. I, I probably prophesied to a thousand of ministers alone, let alone people. Yeah. 
I'm humble. This is all God anyway. I'm just yielding. That's the yeah. one thing I set myself on back for is showing up and yielding. Other than that, he does it all. So, hey, listen, I'm not less needy because I'm here 30 years later. I'm more needy. I need yeah. these guys to minister to me. It's, and that Because I can't go out here on a week-to-week basis, guys, and pour out something from an empty tank. OK, I've got to be filled first. And it begins by that relationship coming to the prepared table, sitting at his feet, getting filled. There's something about being in the presence. Come of God. on. Not only fine tune your ear to his voice and hear him, but also there's something, a metamorphosis, something that the science doesn't have yeah. to happens to a soul that's someone that sits. In the, in the presence of God. There's something that comes on you, a substance. I feel it on me right now. It's a just a weighty presence of God. But I'm just going to toss it to you guys. Come on. I don't have a lot more to say tonight, but I want you guys, I just kind of want you, what I'm trying to do is just interpret the spirit and, 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 and trust that you're tracking with me and we're all tracking with him and that you're going to minister to not only me as a point of contact, but you're going to minister to these ministers. There's many of them, guys, many of them that I see flying by here that have ministries. And I feel like tonight you two got the mojo, the anointing to minister. Go ahead. Who, who wants to start? Uh, you want to be Dr. Premla for two minutes? And then yes, you, sir. Omar, or you guys determine it. Go ahead. I, I'm done. Um, I'm here to receive. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll start and you go ahead, woman of God, afterwards. So, Father, right now, Lord, we speak strength to every minister, God. We speak strength. We speak endurance. We speak momentum. We speak passion. We speak zeal. We speak the hunger and the thirst of God. We speak, Father God, a refreshing of your spirit. We speak uh, in the book of Isaiah chapter 11, God, the spirit of might, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of knowledge, God, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you, right? Right now to come upon your people, God. I think you're removing veils. I think you're removing scales. I think you're removing demonic ear stoppers, God. Anything that's stopping them from hearing your voice, God. You're removing the deaf, the deaf and dumb spirit off. Yes, deaf and dumb spirit come off your people right now. Deaf and dumb spirit come off your people right now. In the name of Jesus, all blindness, all spiritual blindness break right now. In the name of Jesus, I release the fire. I release the fire of God right now. I release the fire of God right now. I release the fire of God. Father, release your glory. There it is. It release your glory. Lift your hands. Everybody who's in their home, lift your hands. God's touching you right now. His glory is coming into your home. The weighty presence of God is touching people. It's even going to be healing. I see healing and back. Slower backs are being healed. Shoulders are being healed as well. Necks are being healed right now. God's even healing people from tooth pain. There's people who are watching this even now or the replay. God's going to heal their mouth from tooth pain. God is healing them right now. There's a healing anointing that's happening now. God yeah. is even going to, there's a miracle. There's a miracle. There's a miracle glory right now. There's a miracle glory. There's such an atmosphere for glory. You're believing glory. God for a miracle, even for a body part, even somebody who needs a surgery. I'm telling you, there's a miracle presence right now, and I speak the fresh wind of God. I speak the fresh wind, a second wind when to come upon you, the strength of God, the counsel of God, the wisdom of God, the strategy of heaven, the leading that the Lord will align you back, align back, the Lord will align your back, the Lord will put you back back on track uh, so you can run this race uh, so you can run this race uh, and you can prepare for the young next generation you can pass on the baton uh, i thank you right now god uh, i thank you father god i thank you right now for the fire of God. oh i thank you for your glory i see people weeping right now there's people who are weeping. There's people who are weeping right now. This there's answer prayers. There's answer prayers. There's answer prayers in this atmosphere. There's answer prayers. There's a glow on the rabbase. There's a miracle glory right now. And there's healing that is happening within homes. There's healing. There's angels that are visiting people even now. There's angels. There's angels that are coming to strengthen you, just like the angel came and strengthened Jesus when he came out of the wilderness. Just like the angel came and strengthened. In Jesus, when he was in Gethsemane, God releasing angels to strengthen many of you. Receive the might and the strength of God, and I release the breakers anointing right now. The angel of breakthrough right now. 
break through every glass wall, every brass ceiling, uh, and I declare your prayers are being heard. Uh, everything that has been stopping the, the heavens from opening up, I declare the heavens open up over your life. Uh, I declare God's provision over your life, uh, supernatural provision. Uh, God is going to provide for you. God's going to make a way for you. I declare the heavens open up even now. I declare the presence of God to go and touch home right now. There's such a wave of presence of God is going to increase even more. I pass it on to you, woman of God. Yes, yes. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, Dr. Perlo, Thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to quickly touch on a few points. Uh, um, I, I was very humble when Prophet Dan uh, uh, mentioned how the ministers, we ministers ourselves, we need ministry. You see, the blinders need to come off. There can be blind spots at times. And a lot of what I do is also minister to ministers. I minister to leaders and I myself need to be poured into. So we, uh, I, I, it's very heavy on my heart today for the leaders and for those of you who are also uh, are called to be uh, leaders. And, and, and when access was mentioned, you know, I thought of the Ark of the Covenant and when the veil was parted through Calvary, through what Jesus did for you and I on the cross, we have access today. But are you able to grasp this? Do you understand completely what this means and do you know how to gain this access do you know what this what what to do with it wow. and prophet wilma so beautifully spoke about i just just love the analogy he used when he spoke about being led uh, by the spirit he said it's like dancing how beautiful how apt it, it is like dancing it, it is that ebb and flow and just like a dancer has grace and needs grace, we need that grace to be able Come to on. and flow and go with the mm. times and the seasons and go with what the, how the Lord is directing. That is the dance between you and your God. That is that intimate dance between you and your God. It's the ebb and flow, people of God. Roshoto. And I'm just going to quickly speak, as Prophet Dan uh, uh, said about the, the reboot. Let's get technical for a minute. When we talk about reboot, it's usually with reference to a computer system to boot or to be booted again. To be, to be booted again, the act of booting a computer system. And, and, and some computers, or, or really most computers, need frequent reboot. Frequent reboot. Yep. So it means to shut down. Okay, you see, we reboot and we restart. To shut down and restart. Or to shut down a computer system and get it moving again. What what there's even a, a difference between rebooting and restarting. You see, the restart starts the firewall. I'm getting technical and the IPS services uh, without rebooting the underlining operation. Come on. If you're going to restart, only that's going to go on. But if you're going to reboot and restart, you see the underlying operating system gets addressed. And this is what needs to be addressed today. The underlying things, your foundation needs to be looked at. This is the reboot and the restart. And now let's couple with, with the mind. I'm talking about the, the mindset. The rebooting and the restarting of the mind. Renew your mind with the help of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4, 22 to 24. Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of Come life, on. which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. There are leaders here that need a renewal and a refreshing and a cleansing, in fact. Put on the your mind. Come nature. on. Created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Righteousness and holiness. Look, we will never be a perfect people, but we have to be a people that hungers and thirsts after righteousness and pure holiness. Purity needs to return to the body of Christ. We need Come on. to move with purity and holiness and integrity and righteousness because that is the nature of Christ. And I need to be more like him. Struggles in the battle of the mind cannot merely be addressed by our willpower or positive thoughts. Help, self, self help books, they, they talk about this. The new age era talks about oh, positive vibes and thoughts. My 
Come on. from the Lord. Spiritual things need spiritual solutions. The Holy Spirit lives within us and knows our thoughts before we do. He's able to renew our thoughts and attitudes. But the choice is yours and the choice is mine. Will we let him today renew your mind by thinking about what God invites you to think of? Philippians 4 and 8. Finally, brothers, whatever which is true, whatever which is honorable, whatever which is just, is pure, is lovely, is commendable, is there in any excellence, is there anything worthy of praise? Think about these. Come on. Think about these things. This list by Paul to the church in Philippi is a great way to help us ring in thoughts that are not included. Even even in, in what I've listed out, it can be tempting to think on negative things in a fallen world. You see, we live in a fallen world, Come on. but we can dismiss those thoughts by trusting that God is well able to handle our burdens and our situations as we cast them on him and pick up thinking on what he told us to think about. There are times where I have to, to make myself do this, to consciously make myself do this. Asking ourselves is what we are thinking about fits into the criteria of Philippines, Philippians 4 and 8. Let's ask ourselves this. It's a, it's, a, it's a great litmus test. I like to call it a litmus test. And filter for our thoughts. We spoke about filters and contaminate, contaminants. So I'm just going to pray, especially over leaders today, a renewal of the mind, a washing and cleansing of the mind. Some of you have gone through, you've come out of, of, of a past season of some difficulties and trauma. I'm hearing there's, there, there's even been betrayals. <laughs> You've been slandered and there have been betrayals. But the Lord is saying, I am preparing you. We said this to come up higher. You're going to the next level and the next dimension. Uh, 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 and, 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 and before this happens, I am going to cleanse you. I'm going to renew you. I'm going to give you a reboot and restart of your minds. And you, you will gain new strength. Yes. God, I bring before you every leader, every minister of the gospel, every fivefold minister that is under the sound of our voices today. Where there has been despondency and despair, I cancel that in the name of Jesus. I release new strength to you. I speak that you are healed and renewed and washed by the blood of Jesus in your mind. I release the mind of Christ to you today. I cancel trauma. I cancel betrayal. I, I release to you new strength and new vision for the journey ahead of you. The Lord says you will heal, you will fully Come on. heal, and you are coming out stronger than ever before. But you're coming out wiser. You are now gentle as a dove, but wise as a serpent. You are going to operate. It's like a leopard with spots on him. <laughs> And, and this leopard is camouflaged. You see, we need to realize, you know, a lot of us, I, I can relate with this, we move with hearts of mercy, hearts of wanting to help. And it's good to be that way. But again, the balance, we need to balance that. God had to teach me this years ago because I am one with a heart of mercy and I always want to help. And he said, one day the Lord said to me, no, look. You need to learn this balance and how to couple it with wisdom and discernment. You need to understand that some spots will, some some leopards will not change its spots. Come but on. Camouflaged and hidden, it's now going to be made so plain to you. The Lord is going to reveal it and make it so plain to you. Some of you have been having certain gut feelings about certain things or certain situations or, or people uh, but the Lord is saying now I'm going to make it so plain and clear to you 
and it is time. I speak that you will have the strength to disconnect where you need to. I speak the Lord gives you the wisdom to do it gracefully, to do it gracefully, to do it in right order, to do it in love, to release, to forgive, to speak blessing, but to move on and to move forward. Leader, it's time for you to move forward. You are not alone. You are not left without anything. Some of you feel like you've lost so much. You feel like you built and built and built and you've lost. Uh, but no, God is fixing to take you up higher. You are a pioneer. I hear the word pioneer. And this is why this has happened. You are a pioneer. And you only dance to God's tune. You listen to me. Come you on. Only dance to God's tune. So I release this holy bonus to you. I release new strength. I even speak that your your uh, one John two and three as if your soul prospers, your emotions heal, your mind heals as your soul prospers. Your body will enjoy good health. There will be good health in all aspects. Some of you, due to the wear and tear, even your bodies are suffering. But the Lord says, "I'm going to touch even those things." Huh? I hear even knees, huh? knees, Come on. knees, weak knees. The Lord says, "I I am strengthening those knees and those legs because you need to go out to the nations. I am sending you out uh, to the nations." Those of you where your spirits have been crushed, where the enemy uh, 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 through sometimes people have ha has tried to muzzle your voice and keep you down and silence you. Oh, you're coming out roaring as a lion. I speak this to you today. There's a new voice and a sound and a heavenly sound that is being released to you, which you are going to release to the nations. You're coming out with a new sound, with a new roar. Roar, minister of God. Roar, prophet of God. Roar, child of God. The Lord roars Come on. to you right now. Some of you are even going to feel a travail, a travail, a sound that is going to come out from you. Lift up your hands and release that sound. This is the sound. It's a wave. It's a sound wave that is going to take you through this new season. You're going to release this new wave everywhere you go. Uh, speak it forth right now. I see people just lifting their hands up even in their living rooms and the sound is emerging from the deep recesses of your belly. Out of your belly. Oh, hallelujah. Rivers of living water. Uh, especially leaders, minister of God. This is your time to shine. Uh, this is the time where a new breed is emerging and arising and being launched. So in the name of Jesus, I take authority and I speak no fear. No fear. Rise up with new strength and go Come forth on. and multiply in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Just receive that tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Just receive it now. You've been faithful to give. Now be faithful to receive. I just kept recalling a word that Prophet Stephanie Levine got about stewarding the oil. And I feel like we're doing that tonight, even though oil might not have been fo the focal point. But it, it all relates. You know, we're going to be the faithful ones. We're not going to have to go bump some oil off somebody else. We're not going to have to go come on. on somebody else's prayer life or there or run out here and try to shop a prophetic word like we're in the spiritual Walmart or something. We're listen, we're keeping our own tanks full in this season more than ever. And we're doing it by our right living, our right giving and our right use utilization of our time, prioritizing the time set, spent with the Lord at his in his presence at his and, and uh, I just believe tonight that God touched and refreshed at the very least. And I believe even people Come got on. free for some stuff.
that they were challenged yeah. to this broadcast. I believe you two were here for just the time as this. And this was truly a Kairos moment. And uh, God, there's Steph, Prophet of Stephanie right there tracking with us tonight. And I just believe that you need to receive, just like me, Steph, just receive right now tonight. You've been so faithful to give. Now be faithful to receive. Amen. Be so faithful and uh, get that passport ready. Amen. Uh, but uh, I'm going to stay away from the prophetic because I want these guys to do all the ministry. <laughs> <laughs> myself. See, it's called repentance. It's, 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 it's falling on you. I, you know, it's falling on you. I want to prophesy. I want to line up about 20 of these people and start prophesying. But I'm trying to set an example and teach people balance. This isn't about a life of get, coming here and getting away. Boy, I need some. You know, this is bad as you do. But I'm the, the most important thing, the most needful thing is come in contact with him. Amen. Come in contact with the word. Get in the spirit. Move with the spirit. You know, you, you know, it's great. It's like carrying a toolbox. You don't, you know, a hammer is great when you're pounding nails and doing roofing. That's so great for doing wiring. <laughs> Matter of fact, it'll do more damage. See, the tools, the spiritual gifts are all tools. The Corinthians says, but they're operated by the one spirit, the same spirit. So there's many tools for many different purposes. So you can't run and lean on one. And you certainly not only can't lean on gifts and tools, but you cannot lean on other people's relationship, other people's prayer life, other people. Yes, there's times where we come into agreement. We need each other. We're going through a tough a place in our life and we need that we need that prayer we need that spiritual encouragement we prophecies to exhort a uh, comfort you know and to and to lift up our brother and sister to edify them and uh and this is the idea of the prophet you know sometimes the prophetic another problem with it we become too much into the foretelling amen and somebody out there needs some help right now because if they don't get the now right then they won't get to the there amen and so i believe uh-huh. the prophetic sometimes also needs to put a greater focus on just encouraging yeah you're, you're right on track i understand i want through it too listen you i what you're going through that attack on your life it's nothing wrong with you at all it's the fact that you've been marked for promotion and the enemy is just revealing that to you because he's showing you that you're a threat he's not going to mess with Mr. Luke warm down the street here or, or sister down here with hanging out with the girls all the time and showing up for church a couple times a month listen what he's he's going to deal with the fiery ones He's the ones that worship him in spirit and truth. The ones that get his attention. He's gonna he's gonna mark you for promotion, amen. Because if that's why you're going through the attack, it's not about you, but it's what you're carrying, amen. And but at the same time, we have to have a balance in all this. We don't we don't get you know we don't run after chase after prophetic words, but we don't despise it either. You know we understand that God utilizes these tools at certain times for His purposes, not ours, His. Amen. And he just works them through the different gifts and the members of the orchestra that play a different instrument, but they create the same sound. It's the sound that the spirit is sounding. It's the wind of the spirit that's blowing through, uh, making the sound through each and every one of us in our particular giftings. But we do not lean on the prophetic. It can become dangerous. That's what bothered me about New Year's Eve. I talked about this. The Lord started talking to me about prophetic spoofing. A lot of these people on here that in the New Year's, we're all just curious what God's getting ready to do. And we're hearing all these many prophetic words. And I sat down and wrote down about 25 or 30 of them and shared the highlights on Paul Rice's program. And it was fascinating because I looked at my wife afterwards and said, which one do I believe? I, I believe most of all these people love the Lord. They have a gift. But which one do you believe? What's God really saying? You see, but so you can't, even the most genuine prophetic, you can't depend on the prophetic to hear from God. You've got to go to God yourself and hearing for yourself. Come on. Amen. And then you're getting confirmations through the people uh, that the, the voices that God brings into your sphere. Amen. You're not, but you're, but if you go out and try just to seek what God's saying without first having a relationship, not a religion ship, a relationship with him and hearing him for yourself, then you know what? You're, you're set up for, you're, you're set up to be spoofed. And you know what? The enemy's clever. He masquerades as an angel of light. Paul says, so he'll, he'll get one of them voices. One of those voices on a New Year's Eve party, he only needs to hijack one. The other the other 19 were perfect words, even though you're trying to figure out which exactly God's doing and trying to put it together like a puzzle. But he can hijack just one, and, and it'll look genuine. It'll sound good. And you'll hear that word, that fake word, that spoofed word come out of that voice. 
And you'll all of a sudden you'll say, well, I guess I'm going to drop everything God told me to do last year. I guess I'm going to go off here in this rabbit trail, this direction now. And the dangerous prophetic spoofing, just like when you get spoofed on the natural, it looks real. But when you answer it, it's a booby trap. It's a it's someone trying to hack in, hack you, trying to trying to get your information or try to make you think it's something that somebody that it isn't. And, and the Lord started really talking to me about this, that New Year's Eve is a particularly dangerous time for this spoofing and the enemy will come in and hijack a voice to try to mislead and get his people off track amen so i don't know how i got into come that you needed to hear that but we have us tonight ladies and gentlemen I, we can come into agreement with us we're trying to encourage people that they need to go to the lord and have a have a relationship hear god seek god Love God, more than importantly, be my goodness. He can love you back a whole lot better than you've been loving on him. And he can change you with his love. But have a relationship for yourself. Don't depend on the other. Don't Come depend on. on the other uh, the other five uh, virgins. Is that what that parable is called? Don't depend on the other five. With Come the on. Because when the, when the going gets with the oil, they're gonna, you're going to be looking for oil. And they're going to say, sorry, we're, we're cutting it off now. You should have been seeking the Lord for yourself. <laughs> We were glad we could help you back then. But see, you, you should have been seeking God for yourself. You should have been kept in your own oil tank full, uh, Mrs. Yeah. Bride there. And now the groom has showed up. <laughs> Amen. And, you're, and you're, your tank is on empty. Think about what I'm saying. And, it, and it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a parable, okay? And it's really talking to Israel, if you want to be honest. But we can glean so much. Come on. It. You can't let, just like your gas tank in the natural, you can't let your gas tank run low. You can't neglect the oil in you, you know, because the, if without oil, you don't, the car in the natural doesn't run right. Yeah. If you think you're going to run right spiritually, if you're lacking oil and you're not, you're, you're neglecting that time of prayer and you're not spending that quality time in, in a, in the spending time at the altar of God in your, your daily time and talking to God and then listening back, getting it familiar getting a, the, the tuning fork in your ear so you can pick up his voice over all the others amen and 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 you're out here just depending on other people you're riding on other people's coattails and then you wonder why you're going through challenges yeah, i'm telling you we're here we love you okay but we're going to also bring you the truth which might come off as correction and yeah. and, and i and i look at i've come on here every week and i'm transparent I, I'm, i'll be 62 on the 12th next month and I, but I'm telling you, I'm still like a young Christian in a lot of ways because I, I, I keep that mindset. You know what? I've got to maintain this. Yeah. I've, I've got to keep, I got to, you know, and, and there's times where I go through things where, listen, I need to pray more. I, I, need, to, I need to do this more or that more. I need to get this, this thing out of my life. I need to spend my time not over here, but over there now, you know, and, and, and sometimes we're pushed into situations. Things come in life that we don't want and don't plan for. And, and we go through this, this turbulence, this, this journey with mm. God. And, and it's not just a once and over. It's a continually, a continually maintenancing thing. And that's why yeah. I got to keep going to God and letting him show me stuff that I'm not seeing. Keep repenting and go to God. And at the very least, go to him and get refilled. When I feel my attitude starting to get a little sour, you know, I, I hear the Holy Spirit. I said, what do you say, Holy Spirit? He says, you need to start thanking me that I woke you up this morning. You need to start thanking me for the things you have. You're too focused on what you don't have and what you're going through. Why don't you thank me for the things you have and what I've given you? Thank you for the things I brought you through when there was no, it looked like there was no hope. You see, when you keep Come your on. tank full, you keep your tank full. And, and I just think God is saying this tonight, that this is a maintenance time. You pulled up here into Dan's garage here, you know, and these, these two here are giving you an oil change. They're looking under your hood tonight in the spirit. And God's using them, amen. You you might be just lacking oil. You might just need a little polish, amen. You you might need whatever you might need, some tune up, okay, so you run a little better. You might you might need your you might need a front end alignment on your car because you've been running for God real good, but you're just a little bit out of line and you're wearing tread. That's why you're Come on. tired, like me lately. Many many are so I many are in a pit stop. So I'm many many are in a pit stop for alignment myself i'm lifting up the hood tonight and i'm letting these two ministers as we we go down to the last 40 minutes or so 45 minutes we're going to minister to people and I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna let them tell me who to pick out okay i'm gonna let them give total liberty here but i just wanted to say tonight that what, what's this all about brother dan this is this is just me 
primarily, and hopefully you too. We're just coming in and getting some maintenance here. We're getting even at the very get the windshield washed here. You know, we look at through too many dead flies. They they, they spoil the oil. The Bible says, you know, we got to get them smudged flies off our windshield and get it all clean so we can see clearly. All these analogies that I'm giving you are just right on from the Holy Ghost because God speaks to me through imagery. He can give me five or ten prophetic words through imagery right there, looking through the windshield. You know, sometimes, you know, we need to get that that the divine Windex to come open and, and, and get that all clear so we can see as we're traveling down the, the road oh, wow. all tomorrow. Amen. We need the oil. We understand the oil. We understand, you know, we understand the things that we're taught tonight are, are so important that we can, we need to have a balance to everything. We don't we don't uh, despise prophecy, but we don't lean on it for everything either. You know, we come into this place called alignment balance. That way we're not burning tread and we're not and we're and we're not finding ourselves cut falling short in the journey and having to pull off the side of the road and call the spiritual triple A to come rescue us. Listen, we're trying to help you. we're trying to help you tonight. Amen. But ladies and gentlemen, ministers, this is all yours. I'm done. I, <laughs> I, I, I just want to say I want to say something because you've been saying something uh just real quick before we start. God is fixing the time belt in many people right now. The time belt. Mm. He, he's fixing the timing. Many are have gone ahead. Many, uh, many are, are waiting on him. And he's, some people he's telling them to go forward. Some people he's telling them to wait until you're endued with power. You have to know when he what he's telling you in this time and the season. But I want to read this scripture real quick because the Lord's been telling me to read it. First Peter chapter four, starting at verse seven. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in prayer. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Here's the, here's the key verse. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, be blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he's blasphemy, but on your part, he's being glorified. So I'm sharing this scripture because many, many of you are ministers here. You guys are ministering and then the enemy is attacking you. It says, do not think it's strange, the fiery trial, because you see the context of the scripture talks about using your gifts. If anyone speaks, let us speak as oracles of God. So I want to encourage you, continue doing what the Lord's telling you to do in this time and this season. And um, and yes, just be obedient to what God is telling you to do and stand your ground. You got to be able to stand your ground. But it talks about the former God. I see you've done it all. Stand. God wants you to stand, be strong and faithful, and to be able to stand, be praying and watching and seeing and sounding the trumpet and, 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 and paying attention. Pay, pray and watch. And I want to, I want to, I want to, uh, because he asked about the thing about the prophecy thing. It says, pray without ceasing. In yeah. all things, give, uh, give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you. It says, uh, do not despise prophecies, right? It says, test all things, hold on to the good and remove the evil or the bad. So the, the, that's the balance. Hold on to the good and remove the bad. And always take the word. Make sure you take it to people. They can test the word to see what is God, what is the flesh, and what is an evil spirit. Because the flesh can get in the way. So you, it, that's important as well. And also bringing it to the Lord and saying, Lord, how much of this is you? How much of this is you? Is this you? Is this really you, Lord? Are you really telling me this? Because it's important. He, if God's giving it through another vessel, God will tell you that. I said, 
You understand what I'm saying? If God's delivering it through another vessel, God will confirm it back, back in, his, in yeah. the secret place. Because many times, a lot of prophecies confirmation that things already the Lord has spoken to your spirit. Yeah. But sometimes it's a proceeding word of God. Man does not live by alone by every word that proceeds in the mouth of God. So sometimes it's a creative word. It creates. It's creating a destiny. It's creating a path. Because his word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. So prophecy creates a path. The last thing I'll say before we start ministering is that God says, go back to prophecies you received five, seven years back. Because yeah. where you're at, there's your answer. Go yeah. back and look at the prophecies. Go back. So that's that's the key thing. You talked about despising prophecies. People have despised prophecies where God has spoken to them in the past. What have you done with those prophecies of the past? I'll leave, I'll leave that there, but we can start ministering after that. Go ahead, uh, uh, as, as you feel that. More concerned about building the man than the ministry. That's and right. Just, just allow oh. God. You know, the care, you know, the gifting will get you there, but the character will keep you there. So He'll I, keep I, you I, there. Come on. I'll say that, Doctor Premla. Please go ahead and and, and minister, and then yeah. just go go right in. And please, after you're done speaking, pick somebody right out of the crowd. They've been anxiously awaiting as we get late here. Just to, maybe we can minister to a couple here tonight. We have a uh, 50 people on. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm just gonna... I'm going to go straight into it. Um, the, the Lord has been highlighting Pastor Cliff, Cliff to me, Cliff, um, I forget his last name. The Lord has been highlighting Cherry. me. Are you still here, Pastor Cliff? Cliff? Yeah, out of New Zealand. Cliff, Cliff Cherry, that's right. God, I thank you, Lord, for this man of God. Uh, Pastor Cliff, I'm hearing for you. The Lord is saying it is time to go into Asia. Uh, you, you are also called for this region. It is time to expand the ministry. Uh, I, I think, um, I don't know you him personally, but I think he may be in New Zealand. But I, I, I'm hearing the Lord say it is time to even expand the ministry into Asia. And as you, this can happen in several ways. It can happen in different ways. And the Lord says, as you press into me, it, I, I'm going to release the blueprints to you. I'm going to show you exactly how. But it is time to expand into the region of Asia. I see Asia upon you, Robo Shata, Leke Son Torobo. And I also see many coming to seek you out for counsel. The Lord will use you. Uh, as a counselor, even to people in high positions, many will come and seek you for counsel. So, Pastor Cliff, over you, I, I speak and increase in the spirit of wisdom and counsel. There has been certain shifts that have happened in your church structure and setting, and these things uh, were, 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 were needed. But the Lord is going to transition you out into some new things. Oh wow! Look at look at that. I just I just saw that this is God. He says we we have just been talking about going into Indonesia in Whoa. May. This is God validating this, uh, sir. This is God uh, endorsing and affirming this trip. Uh, the Lord is going to really multiply your ministry ministry through this trip there's some new things that are going to birth uh, uh, for you for the ministry through this trip and you will find that uh, uh, in due time your ministry uh, uh, will expand into asia there will be some strategic uh, partnerships i'm also seeing a bank okay whatever wh wh whatever dealings with the bank the, the lord is going to finance this the lord is going to release a provision there's going to be some projects that you will start in asia and the lord says i am the source i am that bank i will give you favor even with the bank i will release the provision to you do not worry about that pastor cliff i see you it, there's going to come a season where you're going to have to go back and forth. You're going to be here, you're going to be there. So mm, uh, uh, prepare your, your, your people, train your elders, your trusted people to, 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 to look after things. As, as you transition into the season of, of traveling, I see you, 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 you back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You, you will also go into the remote areas of Asia. But you, 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 you will, you, the, the Lord will cause you to finance this. They, they will turn into projects and, and your ministry will have an imprint in Asia. So I bless you for this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Prophet Wilma. Ah, we can hear you, sir. Corin, are you still here? Corin, Corin Theater. Let me know if she's still here. Yes, I see. Okay, hallelujah. Corin, I hear the Lord say, my daughter, I'm getting ready to, to release a new sound through you. There's a new sound. There's new songs that I'm going to give to you, my daughter, because I've been speaking to you. Even in the secret place, I've been giving you new songs. There's songs that the Lord has been giving to you. In the secret place, you've been in the Psalms. I see you reading the Psalms, and you've been you've been eating the, the, the scroll of the, of the word, and it, it, though it's sweet to your lips, it's bitter to your stomach, and there's a message that the Lord's going to have you deliver through the, the book of Psalms. I see songs of Solomon as well, and even Ecclesiastes, I see these songs that are going to come out of you. I see there's a prophetic psalmist to you. There's a prophetic sound that the Lord's going to have you release because the hand of God is upon you. And I see you travailing and God speaks to you a lot through dreams and visions. And you have a lot of visions and dreams that God speaks to you in the night hour. Even in the night hour, he keeps you up like a watchman on the wall to sound the trumpet as an intercessor. And I see you standing in the rampart seeing what the Lord will say to you like in the book of Habakkuk. And you, God is going to be speaking to you for the clear instruction of the things you've been asking asking him you've been asking him concerning something the answer is coming says the lord i'm going to speak to you write the vision and make it plain that those who run it may run with it. those who read it may run with it though it tarry will not lie it will be true god says continue to stand your ground continue to be the watchman continue to sound the trumpet uh, cry aloud and spare not for i raise you up and you have a sound and you're going to release the song of the lord and, and all will fear and know that the lord is releasing the sound through you and i see people even prostrating themselves in the presence of God because the fear of the Lord is going to be released even with the, with the place where you go and you worship and you release the sound of God there's a sound that's coming forth there's things that the Lord is birthing within you there's a fresh fire that's coming upon you woman of God so stand until the Lord has called you to continue to release the song of the Lord because surely the song of the Lord is on your lips uh, the song of the Lord the song of deliverance the song of healing you're going to even release songs they're going to bring healing I see women weeping as you're singing the song of the father to the daughters and I see the sound that's being released that the Lord's having you release uh, for such a time as this uh, and I speak inspiration to arise uh, that the Nabi will arise with that will, will bubble up within you that the word will bubble up and it will pour forth like rivers of living water it will flow out of you and there will be a movement that comes out of you that you will sing uh, prophetic songs uh, in Jesus mighty name thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to quickly speak to Sanjita. Sanjita, I, I see that you're emerging as, as a new voice. There's a new roar that is coming out from you. The Lord is going to release you as I hear a new voice, a fresh voice. Sanjita, you carry a heart of mercy. There is a ministry of help over you but the lord now is going to balance this with uh, the wisdom that and discernment that we spoke about and, and and he's going to also give you holy boldness to emerge with this new uh role and sanjita you're also like a hannah you're you're this this intercessor who i see you weeping and travailing for people and for nations and the lord says it is these it is your prayers and your travailing your intercession that is changing things uh, 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 throughout the nation so all you have to do is sit in that room in your prayer closet but you will affect the, the nation Sanjita no longer are you to stay behind the scenes no longer are you to shy away Sanjita I decree and declare over you today you are emerging as a new and bold a voice there is a roar within and you in and you that you are going to release Sanjita and your husband look I don't know you but I see business on your husband the Lord is going to prosper your husband in the marketplace that is his platform it doesn't matter if, if if the nature of the calling is different you work together well you work together well there is such synergy between the both of you it's quite different uh, what the both of you are called for but he he will be prospered in the market place so roko shete lebakuto shibikide mikopo i speak over your husband that he will not miss uh, miss no more i'm hearing no more missed opportunities 
This time around, the Lord is going to cause him to, uh, 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 to be identified to the right people. The right people will see him, will see uh, uh, his skill. No more problems and setbacks in the area of job. I release this over your husband and the both of you together. Sanjita, it will start as a home group. I don't know if you already have this going. It's going to start as a home group. Book of Acts, House Church, it's going to start that way. But you will go forth. I don't know how, but I hear the word nations. You will go forth into the nations. Remember, do not despise the small beginnings. It will start as a home group. Uh, uh, seek the Lord concerning this and move forward. It's time to move. The Lord says, move forward in faith. You can lead this. You can. You are called to be a leader in your gentleness and in your sweet spirit. You are a leader in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Um, what was it that I saw? Um, where was it? Jill, 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 Jill Heinemann. Jill Hyman. Let's see if she's still here. Jill Hyman, I see the hand of the Lord upon you, and I see this entrepreneur thing to you. I see this Esther anointing on you of favor and God's grace upon you. I see the boldness of Esther is going to come upon you, and you're not going to be afraid to ask so one third of the kingdom will be given to you. I see the favor of Esther and I see that God's given you this, this ability to be able to multiply what's been given to you. And God's going to cause you to prosper and increase and multiply that which is given to you. There's an entrepreneur thing. There's a marketplace anointing on you, Jill Hyman, that the Lord has given to you. I see multiple streams of income that the Lord's given to you. And I even see a book that the Lord's going to have you write. Yes, there's a testimony that the Lord's going to have you to write that's going to minister to many people and it's going to bring healing and deliverance. Even even as you talk about the testimony of the things that you have gone because you have gone through much stuff and God's hand is upon you. And the Lord has not forgotten about you because God says in the book of Jeremiah chapter 30, write it right in a book. The vision that I give to you and God's been giving you vision. God's been giving you vision and you're going to be writing the, the hand of the Lord because there's a scribal anointing on you. I even see you write, writing in a diary. I see you writing prayers. I see you writing your heart to God and God sees these things that you have written in secret. And I see the scribal anointing that is upon you. Jill Hyman, and I bless you in the name of Jesus, and I say those books to come forth. I speak to the publisher to come forth. I speak to the favor of God to be released for you to step into the things that God has for you, and God is raising you up for such a time as this uh, because the Lord says it's time for you to be bold, no longer be silent. The enemy is trying to silence you, and I break the muzzle that's been trying to silence you, for you are have a voice, and God has given you a voice, uh, and I speak to the roar to arise, and I speak to the boldness to come forth. I speak to the confidence to come forth. I speak to the courage to come forth, that you will be a courageous one, that you will be a bold one, that you will not be intimidated. God did not give you a spirit of fear, but a love power and a sound mind. And I break off the spirit of depression has been trying to come against you. Even in the night hour, those things have been trying to come against you, those traumas and those thoughts of the past, I break them off you and I declare you have a soundness of mind. Let this mind be in you, that soul is in Christ Jesus, and I release it over you. I declare you have the mind of Christ and I pull down every stronghold and every imagination, every argument, every high love, you think that exalt yourself over the knowledge of Christ to the obedience of Christ. I held it captive right now to the obedience of Christ, every single thought. And I speak to your mind to be regulated. I break off all headaches. I break off all migraines. I break off every assignment of the enemy. I've been trying to come against you. For God has called you for such a time as this. There's a marketplace anointing on you. And God's going to open up doors for even there's a grace on your life for networking. There's a grace on your life to connect with people and to connect other people. You are a bridge. Uh, you are the repairer of the breach uh, of the streets as well. And God has called you for such a time as this. And I bless you in Jesus name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Did, Thank you, Jesus. Did, did, did one of you have anything for this young lady? Lydia, she's requesting prayer. Um, uh, I, know, I know Lydia, so, so a pastor to prophet uh, Wilma. Go ahead. Lydia, 
Lydia, I, I speak to your hope to arise. Hope is an anchor. Whatever that's been trying to snuff out your hope, I speak to the hope. And those who wait on God will not be disappointed. I speak to hope to arise. You've been crying out for the promises of God. And I see you. I see you. I see you like uh, Anna in the New Testament, who was an intercessor. She was a prophetess. She was praying and fasting. She was a, uh, uh, she was a mother as well. And she was interceding and crying out God for the promise. And she interceded you. God has given you an anointed to birth out things through intercession for other people for to see the promises of God. Even like Anna, who she saw the Messiah, she saw the promise. You will see the promise of God, not only in people's lives, but even in your life. And I say, whatever's being held back, I break the back of delay. I break off every obstacle that's been coming against those things that you've been asking for. Even the miracle. There's a miracle. There's a miracle you've been crying on. I, I release that. I release it. Let that miracle come forth. Let that answer prayer come forth. It, it no longer will be held uh, back in the name of Jesus. Uh, I speak. Come forth now. Come, oh, come, forth, uh, come forth. Come forth. Come forth. Come forth. Come forth. And the Lord's also telling you to come forth uh, because it's a new thing. I see you preaching in the streets. I see this revival tense with you. I see you going and evangelizing, evangelizing the people in the streets and moving in prophetic evangelism and preaching the word of the Lord and compelling people to come to the Lord. If Jesus be lifted up, you will draw all men to himself. And I see you lifting up the name of Jesus, Jesus drawing people to, 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 to come to salvation. And the hand of God is upon you and the wind of God is blowing upon you. And God is speaking to you for such a time as this for this. There's an evangelistic anointing and prophetic anointing, a combination of, of, of both of them. I see this, this, this combination of both those both mantles because there's the evangelism and, there, and there's the heart of the prophet and the prophetic uh, to reveal what's in the heart. And even as you're preaching, uh, even as I see you going in the highways and the byways and to the holiness and the highway of the holiness, uh, I see you ministering to people in the streets. Uh, I see you, the Lord, moving you with compassion for there's a heart on those out. There's a heart of compassion to pray for the sick and there's a healing anointing on your hands. Uh, the healing anointing. You shall lay the hands of the sick and they shall recover in Jesus name Dr. Premla can you take 30 seconds and you see the comment here with Jill about being discouraged with a business startup can you release an anointing for people that are starting up businesses and for entrepreneurs please just for like yes. a minute for Jill Father, thank, you. thank you Jesus Father in the name of Jesus right now I just speak an anointing for a business anointing and, and entrepreneurs anointing over your people here, those who are already in business and those who are wanting to start uh, uh, businesses. God, I pray for Jill right now. Did you release the blueprints uh, uh, to her, uh, God? Uh, the, 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 you're going to use her in some some form, like I see, like a trainer, like like a coach. There's the, 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 something to do with a with a consultancy, even. But God, release the downloads, give her the ideas, show her how to start this, uh, where to start. I speak a release of even provision. I speak, oh God, clarity to be able to hear from you how she should move uh, forward. Jill, just track with us and tell me if you've already uh, uh, started the, the, this business. I don't know if, if you're going to continue in what you're doing or if the Lord is going to give you uh, uh, something new. But but I've already told you uh, what areas I, I, I saw you uh, moving in. So I just speak a blessing over your hands that whatever you touch to, to do, the Lord will prosper and you will, be, you will get unstuck. Uh, no more delay. No more delay. Kingdom entrepreneurs, I call, I call you to arise right now. You are such an integral part, a vital part to the kingdom and what the Lord is wanting to, 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 to uh, be executed in this time, in this season. So kingdom entrepreneurs, I call you to arise. I call you to even yes. partner with governments. I even speak a governmental authority and anointing over you that your businesses will all also see you access to government. I speak the strategic partnership and I call you to arise, kingdom entrepreneurs, in the name of Jesus. Yes. 
There was a, yes, I, I agree with that. I, I keep hearing the Lord say unusual pulpits. He, he, what, he, what that's telling me is that he's going to begin to use people in ministry as well as the business at the same time. He, and the business will fund, not only take care of the person personally, but will fund the ministry. And the Lord will be able to strategically place unusual pulpits in places of the spheres of influence that he's looking to do. That's why he's put such an emphasis and anointing on this in this season, guys. Yeah. There's a lady on here. I believe it's Brenda. Can can one of you break the, take just a, two minutes or less because of time, and break the generational cycle off of this family? It doesn't take much discernment to see that. So go ahead if you would. Father, I break the generational cycle of migraines right now. I take authority. Even I was, uh, even as uh, I, I was, I was feeling it's lifting off me because I was discerning. I had a word of knowledge. I was feeling a migraine and it was you. So I break it now in the name of Jesus. I break uh, right now every device, every tentacle of, of an octopus spirit that's just trying to crush your brain and crush and crush the, the, the head right now. I, I ask Lord that you would sever it with the sword of the Lord, every device and every uh, octopus be removed in the name of Jesus. Now, I uh, thank you for your fire. Let it catch fire right now. Headaches break, migraines break, and anybody else who needs it, anybody who be suffering from migraines, I break off witchcraft. Let it catch fire now. Catch fire now. All uh, witchcraft against the mind, against the thought patterns, uh, all the fogginess, uh, all the all the cloudiness, all the confusion. I break off confusion. I break off distraction. I break off disorientation now. Let it catch fire now. I uh, speak clarity of mind, clarity of thinking, process of thinking, memory recall. I, I speak to the memory. Bless is the memory of the just, like it says in the book of, uh, of Proverbs. I speak to the memory. I speak to the memory recall as well. In the name of Jesus, you will be able to recall things. You'll be able to pick up things again. In the name of Jesus, you'll be able to remember things again. And I come against oh, oh, any uh, any any early signs of Alzheimer's. I break it now by the precious powerful blood of Jesus and I declare Isaiah 53 and 5 that by his stripes you are healed, you are made whole, you have peace, you have shalom, nothing broken, nothing shattered right now. In the name of Jesus, I declare healing right now. Uh, Brenda, there's fire coming upon you right now. There's an angel releasing fire right now and removing that thing that was coming against your granddaughters are coming against you and, and, and the bloodline is breaking now in the name there it is. There it is. There's ministry angels and friends of fire that are where you are at in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So good. So good. So good. Just receive that prayer. Break, break that cycle. You've been called to make an impact, not only out here doing ministry in the marketplaces and the spheres of influence, but also in your own family. The number one minute, one of the number one top ministries, I should say, is the number one ministry to him. But Understand, you're the one that can break that cycle in your family. And listen, yeah. the impact you make today in this generation will have a ripple effect into the next generation, as you've seen there. My grandkids had a headache because my daughter had a headache. You know, it just didn't take much discernment. But you can break that cycle, and instead of a cycle of problems and a cycle of maybe curses going into that future generation, you can initiate cycles of blessing. And I've been into that lately, cycles of blessing. And that, that will reverberate your prayers and your decree will reverberate in the spirit. And even long after you punch out of this body here, your prayers and your blessing will like a blessing of Abraham will be all over your future generations that you leave. Amen. So let's just break those cycles and initiate those God cycles. Amen. Um, do you guys in the last couple of minutes, do you have any uh anything you want to say, or do you have any people you're still led to minister to? You you maybe want to um, do a group? Just very quickly, uh, Prophet Dan, the Lord has been highlighting Heidi, Heidi McKeehan to me. Uh, and, and while we, we look for her, uh, I'm also hearing kidney. I, I don't know if it's like a kidney uh, uh, infection. So I just release healing. Right now, I speak over kidneys. I speak over uh, uh, every infection, every inflammation. I just call for kidneys to function as they're meant to function. And in fact, I speak over every other organs as well. I speak over uh, organ health, that, you, that, that, that these organs will function at mm -hmm. optimal level. Those of you who are even needing a creative miracle, I speak a release over you from the stars, house of heaven. I even speak new organs. I, I release creative uh, miracles.
miracles to you in the name of Jesus. You shall be healed and you shall be whole in the name of Jesus. The Lord has been highlighting you to me and I see him, beautiful daughter of God. I see him wiping your tears away. Yes, come on. He's wiping your tears away beautiful ashes the lord says i'm going to give you joy i am wiping those tears away i am healing you uh, 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 uh. this has also caused you you will know what i'm talking about uh, uh this has also caused trauma and heartache but the lord says i'm healing you from within and i'm strengthening your body as well yeah. and i'm raising you up heidi I, I, the, the main thing i'm seeing for you is healing and i'm also hearing restoration in the area of relationship heidi the lord is also bringing for you restoration in the area of relationship or relationships there's been also some heartbreak when you need it uh, and these trusted people the most that's when they've left but the lord says i'm bringing restoration to this i am be, uh, bringing new community to you you are not alone i have been with you through the fire heidi but the lord says he's highlighting your eyes to me i release to you a new seer anointing you're going to see like never before and the lord is also going to speak to you through dreams heidi have that notebook and pen next to you be expectant the lord is going to release to you in the night season heidi you're going to move as a seer but you are going to the lord is going to send the downtrodden to you he is going to send the hurting to you those who are going through exactly what you have walked through and you are coming out heidi victorious says the lord but i'm going to send such a people to you for you to minister to them and you will bring healing to them you will be like ezekiel in ezekiel this tree where many will come and rest under your shade Heidi, as you yourself are being healed, that trauma goes, that affliction goes, and you will move forth in effective ministry for the hurting in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Just, just put your hand on your heart real quick. I see, I see in the spirit that the oil is flowing, you know, and the Lord was just talking to me about both of you too, about how you both are spiritual mechanics. <laughs> he says, but get ready because I'm going to get ready to show you like a, like a mechanic who, what makes him one mechanic more distinctive than the other is he has the ability to fix complex problems. And that comes to getting revelation and education on the finer points of how an engine operates. And the Lord says, get ready, both of you. I'm getting ready to open your eyes in a greater level. And I'm going to show you things that many people are missing. And you, I'm going to cause you to, be, to give you the wisdom and the anointing to go in and to spot those mechanical problems in the spirit. And I'm going to cause you, give you the anointing and give you the hands of the divine mechanic to go in and to allow my anointing to flow through you to cause repair even says yes 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 divine mechanics he says you're a divine mechanics and the lord says watch i open your eyes because i'm going to begin to reveal and show you things and i'm going to reveal things to you that are holding my people back things that are causing my people and spiritually not to run right i'm going to cause people to show you things about my people that are causing them not to stay on the road i'm going to show you things about my people that have kept them in neutral and, and have caused them not to be able to get very far down the road that i've paid for them i'm going to give you insight it's like a spiritual mechanic you're going to go and you're not only going to refresh and you're not going to only be one that refills but the lord says also you're going to be one that repairs in jesus name so father in the name of jesus go ahead guys there's an anointing right now as dr premla uh, is going to release just for 30 seconds real quick that there's an inner healing that's coming just put your hand on your heart or wherever that that wound that that you got that relationship that abuse that hurt that wound you got as a kid that rejection the people that you the people that didn't understand 
how God created you, didn't understand the anointing that was on your life, that hurt you got in the church. Amen. God's going to heal people tonight from the heart. As, as you allow Dr. Premla, we're just going to release that oil right now. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Jesus, God. Father, I take authority in the name of Jesus and I release inner healing and deliverance, oh God, Lord. No longer with, will those wounds have just band-aids over them. You're going in and you're healing. I, I take authority over trauma and I command you to leave in the name of Jesus. Leave, leave. You cannot hold and, and keep captive anymore. I cancel trauma in the name of Jesus and I'm also hearing single mothers for every single mother here the lord is locating you right now i pray over single mothers the lord says this is your time i'm going to bless you the uh, it's almost a struggle i hear the struggle is over huh? uh, the hustle is over every single mother i speak a special impartation of grace over you the lord says uh, you've done your dues you've done well I i've seen your faith Faithfulness, but now I'm even going to send help to you. I see the train coming, and this is help that the Lord is going to send to you, single mother. There's going to be a new release over yes. you and your children. But the Lord says you have been self selfless, but I am now going to give you certain things for you, for you that my desires for you is going to be the desires of your heart. So I bless every single mother here, God, new strength, a provision they will get to where they need to get to in the name of jesus i pray amen so oh, yeah that's so good just receive let us know if god has lifted a burden destroyed a yoke tonight touched you you feel you've got you feel like you've got free or you got on the road now to freedom amen because the bible says whom the sun sets free is what he might be free. No, it's free indeed. Amen. So receive your freedom tonight as these two gifted ministers release the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon your life. Just receive it tonight. Yeah. In the last couple of minutes, I, I know you guys got, got to go. Um, I'd like to do another hour myself, but I'm, I've am i been online for four or five hours. <laughs> My wife over there shaking the five-fold ministry at me. Get over here, boy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> You know, her five-fold ministry, you know, when I don't behave myself. But uh, that's okay. You guys can pray for my healing. But uh, I'd love to have, I'd love to stay on another hour. I really would. But I, I, I just, I just want you to say something in closing. I want you to tell people how they can connect with you. I want you to post any type of giving ministry that's pertinent here. Uh, so they can sow into you. You know, don't deprive somebody of a blessing now because just because, you know, you don't want to put your giving information. Amen. Uh, you know, listen, when God talks to you about a seed, he's got a harvest on his mind. So these two will provide their giving information if they wish. And uh, I'll, I'll put mine down here as well. Um, if I can find it. And there it is right there. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Paul Rice, it's so much fun just to sit back and be the guest and let you do the work. I was, I was joking about that earlier. I see Paul's on here. Hey, Paul, that was a great broadcast this morning. A little different, uh, but uh, yeah, I just appreciate you and the opportunity and Prophetic Flow program. Very good. He's on there a lot more than I am. I go back to work five days a week along with my wife. Sleeping Beauty is already snoring a little bit over there. She <laughs> gets up real early to go to her job, and I'm, I'm shortly after. And we work all day, and that's good, and that's great. God blesses it, believe me. And we're out in the workplace. And uh, Mark of Love Ministry, Wilmar Fernando Navarro for Fort Navarro. Lauderdale. Navarro. I got, uh, you can tell I'm tired. Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Amen. And uh, tell them a little bit real quick about your, your ministry and how they can hook up with Wilmar. Yeah, you could uh, hook up with me, uh, Wilmar Fernando Navarro. I also have a, a Facebook page, Mark of Love Ministry. Um, yeah, you could hook up with me there. Write to me on Messenger. If you have any questions, prayer, or anything, uh, let me know. You know how I could pray for you or how I can help you. We're here to help one another in the body of Christ. I also have a website, MarcoLoveMinistry.com. It's on there as well, too, if you want to write to me an email or anything as well. As, yeah. Yeah, and, and the worst part about this broadcast is having to say goodbye. Oh, 
Let's do this again. Yeah. <laughs> How about, what are you doing tomorrow night? It's always, it's always a blessing. It's always, it's always a blessing being with you. I'm always encouraged to be. Thank you. You, you. you too. I mean, I'd like to hang out with you. If you're ever up in the Orlando area, look me up. And uh, and I'll maybe I'll hook up, give you my phone number. So if you are in the area, you can call me and even come see me at work. And home away from home. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, and I'm, everybody knows I'm a server, and I, I go to. I love my job; it's a challenge, and uh, I, I love it. You know, two days are ever the same, and I, and it, it, God blesses me through that job. You'd be stunned, and we're just looking at each other today, like, wow, we're just we're just in a good good place right now. We're just in a good place, but I, I'm only I'm the happiest when I'm doing this. I've said I have I've sat here. All day, I haven't left the house because this is my heart right here. Is right here, doing the Lord's work. But I, let me tell you a little secret. I just like hanging around Jesus. There's something about that presence. It's my dope. Okay, come on. I love yeah. hanging out with Jesus. I love hanging out with His people. You know, and while I'm here trying to move 45, 55 names up and down and try to think, you know, how I can pay attention to every single one of you, because I've been the one on these lives in the past left out before. I understand what that feels like to come on, you know, need some prayer and some being or, not, or just be acknowledged with me, you know, and sometimes and I didn't mean to it wasn't intentional. It's just so many of you whipping by there. I, I remember I started talking and ministering for a couple of minutes. And I look up, I'm 25 names in the hole at least. And I'm like, bam, 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 trying to catch back up and get to the, where the comments are with the current uh, thing that's going on. So, you know, it's a little different when you have to moderate it versus just kicking back and ministering and getting in the spirit. I love hanging around the people of God. Better is one day in the house, <laughs> in his house, than a thousand <laughs> elsewhere. Not that one, not the houses I used to hang out in, but his house. Amen. Well, better is one day in his house, in his courts, than a thousand elsewhere. And this is me. Yes. Hang out, and I love doing these programs. Especially now, I got my new my new toy here, my new sixteen gig gaming computer. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to tackle the world. Hey, man, I'm ready. To, I'm ready for ministry. And and the Holy Ghost says, oh, "Wait a minute, Bucko. <laughs> you need to hold on. You need to track with me. You know, <laughs> I'm like the wild pony. Sometimes he has to. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay." Somebody forgot to tell you you were going to be 62 on the 12th, huh? Yeah, the Holy Ghost has to, you know, he's my wisdom as well. You know, you can not only go to him for insight and empowerment, but he'll give you wisdom. And he'll, uh, he'll, he, you know, he's like the parent that I don't have anymore. Amen. But uh, I thank God for people in my life like you and Bishop Greg Gill, who's ministering in the Philipp Philippines, I believe, all week. And uh, I, I thank God for this technology that I can connect with people from all around the world that I may never have a chance to meet otherwise. And well, I mean, Wilmar's down here in, in balmy Florida, but Dr. Prem was way over there in Malaysia. My goodness, that's a long drive. <laughs> hey, my, 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 seven miles to the gallon, but you know what? It would probably need some wings because that's a long way. She's, <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, she's here in the spirit. Yes. Exactly. Amen. And I'm just thankful for these opportunities to come online and, and, Thankful for Jennifer Butler and Pioneer for giving me the slot on Monday nights to do these broadcasts. And I can come into contact with gifted, unique ministers every week that are a blessing not only to me, but I pray that they're a blessing to each and every one of you, dear friends out there. Uh, so, hey, we're blessed. As we say in the South, you're blessed. You're highly blessed. <laughs> yeah. And we're just we're just thanking God that He encountered you tonight, and thanking God for these two powerful ministers right here, uh, Prophet Wilmar. Look forward. Do you have programs on still, or you just kind of randomly do them around work? Or like yeah, I do them. I'm, I'm going to start going more live, me myself as well, and then connect with people as well too, as the Lord leads. You know, I, you know, you see me here, so, but sometimes the Lord. You have to be obedient when the Lord pushes you aside. You know, he wants to, he wants you, he wants to make sure, and I'm saying this because it's important that our heart is right. It's important that we're right before the Lord. And sometimes it's things we don't even see. Sometimes it's something minimal. And we got to pay attention to the small foxes that knocked on the vineyard. Let him do what he has to do in his presence. If he's healing you, if he's working on you, if he's if he's dealing with your character, if he's having you fast, if he's having you read the word, just let him do all he has to do because at the right moment, 
the opportunity will come. He had, he had given me a word. I did a holy minute word, and I spoke, and I released it for this year. This is a year that opportunity is going to be coming to many people, but are you prepared for those opportunities? Bible says the race is not for the, for the, the, for the swift, neither for the strong, but it, time and chance happen for them all, right? In the book of Ecclesiastes, are you prepared for what God is bringing to you? Are you prepared for that opportunity? Yeah, and that's so I'm, I'm just, you know, I can just flow. You know how I am. I start flowing, and <laughs> that's so good. You're like me a little bit, but it's the Holy Ghost. We believe that's in, that's inspiring. Yes, you know, Hallelujah. That, yes. That, yeah. that mechanic, you know, you know, you got to prepare that car before you take a trip. You know, and you got to make Come sure the good. The engine's running. The windshields are clean, so you can see. Yeah. This. And this is all so relative tonight. And what was being brought out is that you know we need to sit. In this season, and allow God to align us, prepare us. And, you, and what's my job? Just say, "Here, Lord, here I am, Lord." You've said, "Here I am, God, send me." Now say, "Here I am, Lord, prepare me, pack me, you know, fill me where I'm lacking. Remove the thing that's causing the engine not to Come run. On. Remove whatever it is, Lord. Here's my life, Let yeah. it consecrated, Lord, to Thee." Amen. And this is, and Come on. you'll be so glad when the day called tomorrow gets here because God's getting ready to move and do something. Revival, they, they're not just talking to talk. Revival coming, believe me. It's, it's not a question of if, but a question of when. And let me tell you, revival's coming and you don't want to be called not ready for it. Amen. Mm. You, know, you, you know, you, God, is, and when you're ready and position, God will, will, God will use you <laughs> and he'll empower you and you, it'll, you'll have a front row seat to what God's mm -hmm. doing to do in the land and in the church and uh you'll have, be so glad that you use this season right here to prepare yourself for the season mm -hmm. coming amen but prophet wilmar i'm gonna let you go thank you sir and let's do this sooner than later you guys you guys were in the zone tonight man i just a couple times i just feel like leaving and just listening to you guys like i'm one of them man oh wait somebody's <laughs> got to move this thing somebody's got to move this train <laughs> you, you two were like thunder and lightning man you were Salt and pepper, something I don't know, man. You <laughs> I really I, and listen, I, and I don't say that loosely. I was feeling times where I was stirred in my stomach and getting touched, and I would sit down and think, oh, I just let 20 names pass by here. <laughs> I did, I didn't facilitate, <laughs> I need to move from him to her, her to him. And I'm sitting there thinking, ah, oh, ah, oh, you know, I'm just receiving, and that's beautiful because you know what? I'm humble enough to tell you, like I said earlier. I need to receive. I'm more needy than ever. I'm yeah. Ever. The higher God takes me, the more I need, man. The more and more I need. So that way I can honor, prophet, honor him. Prophet Dan, I feel I have something from the Lord for you. And wow. the Lord the Lord wants me to say, you've been giving out, you've been giving out a lot. And God says, this is a season of you to receive. There's blessings that I have for you, my son. Wow. Oh, I did that. I'm sorry. How'd that happen? No, you did it. Shut up, you you got to, yeah, you got to unmute it. Can you hear me? One second. There you are. Go I ahead. can't hear you. There it is. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? That's been happening a lot with audio. Huh? Last three weeks. There you are. You're back now, I think. I can't hear you at all. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? There we go. I hear you now. Okay. I have a word from the Lord for you. I was trying to tell you that, that, that you've been giving out a lot. I hear the Lord say, this is a time for you to receive. There's some blessings that the Lord has for you for, for this time and the season. There's some doors that God is opening for you. God is bringing some new connections to you. God's bringing new ministers to you. And God's, and God's bringing people for you, for you to receive from. Because I feel like you've been giving out a lot. You've been pouring out a lot. And I'm, I'm seeing, was it Hebrews 6 and 10? That God's not unjust to forget the good works you have done. Loving and people. And God says, this time is for you to receive my favor. My favor has gone up before you. And it's time you run after the favor that has gone up before you. You because favor is the shield about the righteous, and I'm releasing favor to you, my son. And yes, there will be a time, my son, that you will step into new things. And I see you traveling. God's gonna open up some doors for you to travel even more. And I see some states that are gonna open up for you, but the Lord wants you to receive. It's open up your hands. I'm seeing Isaiah 55 where it says, and eat and, and buy for free, for free. God's taking care of the feet for free. 
for free. He's taking care of the fee. He, he's releasing his favor to thee. He's releasing it to you. Yes, my son, I called you to the many, I called you to the few, and I've chosen you in your mother's womb. And yes, I have new things that are coming soon. My hand is upon you, and I am raising you up, and I'm taking you up into a deeper place to seek my face. And you will be hidden from the enemy. He will not find you in a trace, because I'm telling you it's time for you to run this race. The, the, the horse is ready to run the race. It's time for you to run. You ran with men. How much more are you going to run with horses? And I'm giving you new courses. I'm giving you new things. I'm giving you new, new, new things. And God's powering you up. God's putting new God's putting up, there's an upgrade that's happening to you, man of God. There's an upgrade to your, to your, the gifts that he's given to you is an upgrade in, in the wisdom, an upgrade in the strategy, and, and it's upgraded. And I even see you reading books. I see you reading, reading certain books that, that this is the season. I hear the Lord says, now you put it to the side. God says, pick up the books, not just the word, but I see you picking up books. And in the books, there's going to be revelation that's going to be given to you and, and, and illumination. And I even see the scriptures. The Bible says, oh, Open my eyes, Lord, and I'm going to see the wonderful things in your law, and I see your eyes opening up as you are in the word, and I see you reading books as well, and things are going to be jumping out on you, and God's going to be speaking to you, for God says it's time for you to receive not just blessings, not just my favor, but revelation is coming upon you, my son. Step into the new things that I have for you like never before, because my hand is upon you. I have not forgotten about you. There's things even as a child, mm -hmm, there's things as a child that the Lord has not forgotten about and he's given to you. There's dreams, there's dreams even as a child that he's put within you. Things you have had, you had visions as a child. You had these visions and these dreams and these things and you're like, when are they going to happen? Like Joseph, come on, like Joseph, the Joseph. And God says, you are you are my Joseph. You are the dreamer of dreams. There's a, there's a mastery of dreams to you. You have a mastery of dreams. You, 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 you're you master of dreams. That means you have a lot of dreams, but you can interpret the dreams. And even if you're not interpreting dreams, I unlock the interpreter of dreams. The Bible says that you have a dream, God can interpret it, but God will give you the ability to interpret a dream. Like in the book of Daniel chapter 1, you have the ability to discern and interpret dreams and visions. And I pray for a spirit of wisdom and discernment and understanding to come upon you and revelation to interpret enigmas, riddles, dreams, to unknot things, uh, to understand the, the deep things as deep calls unto deep. Uh, in the name of Jesus, receive a fresh wind, uh, refresh, receive a fresh breath uh, coming upon you. And even I break that python spirit that's been trying to snuff your prayer life. I've been stuff for trying to snuff you reading the word of God and seeking the presence of God. I pray for a fresh passion, a fresh hunger, a fresh zeal for the things of God coming upon you, man of God. And I pull you up in the spirit. Uh, I say, get back up, man of God, because uh, the enemy is trying to snuff you. The enemy is trying to snuff you and, and knock the air out. But God says, I'm breathing. I'm breathing. I'm breathing my spirit into you. I'm breathing my spirit into you. I'm breathing my spirit into you. In Jesus' name. Dan, I also want to speak a witch prophet will my name, but Dan, such grace you carry, such grace you carry in difficult situations with difficult people. The Lord says you have exhibited nothing but grace. And I don't have much, but it's just a small extension of what Prophet Wilma ha has already released to you. Yes, you please. are called for this generation. You are going to train and equip this generation. You are called to train and to equip. Your voice is needed, but the wisdom, then you carry depth in you and and the and the wisdom that the lord has given you now needs to be released and imparted to this generation so the lord says uh, where you felt weary that season is coming to an end a, a refreshing a new wind i literally see a new the rock of god a new wind coming behind your back to uh, push you forward into the new. I too saw uh, uh, travel doors, but I see you going into these different regions and countries to uh, train and equip even 
leaders. I see you mostly moving in this capacity and this role. And Donna, she's been that strength and that pillar. Uh, faithful. You're so faithful next to you. But again, the Lord says her voice will emerge through writing. Uh, I don't know if she's ever even considered it or ever, maybe she even thinks, I'm not a writer. But Donna's voice is going to emerge through the scribal anointing and she will stand next to you. She will go with you and Donna will be that mother to nations. She will be the one as your ministering prophet then she will be there to give people a hug. As she hugs people, people will be healed of broken hearts. People will be healed of trauma. As she just give all she needs to do is stand there and give, I see her giving them a big hug and things will will break in the name of Jesus. So God, who together as the family of God, we bless this couple. We release, oh God, a refreshing, a healing, a strengthening. The Lord says, I am now watering even those dry places. I am watering. I am going to give you new strength and new vigor. I am going to raise you up and I'm going to launch you forth to go into the nations and to train and equip my leaders and expand, expand, expand. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> That's the power of God right there. My phone just went. It was just. I, I, I feel it here too. <laughs> <laughs> it just went singing. But I released this to you. This beautiful couple who has been good. so graceful and selfless and uh, people will come and support with finances but god however you may even use us um uh, this couple is family to me i i'm very careful about these things but i'm hearing this uh, uh, in due season god in due course that you will even use us to facilitate this work that you have in store for this couple in the name of jesus we pray amen very quickly for Prophet Wilma, if I may, and yeah. and and hopefully yes. you, you you both will pray for yeah. me after that. Kera Mashoto, Debekobo, man of God, I, I see I see you carry such an anointing for deliverance. Oh, what a powerful and strong anointing for deliverance and the breakers anointing. When you walk into spaces, ah, demons tremble. When you walk in, uh, you, you have been given regions uh, for you as well. Uh, uh, I see the nations and even South America, the Lord is going to send you in and principalities in high places are going to come down. You will up root it will even cause a bit of a it will it will it will what's the word i'm looking for it will cause a bit of an uproar but know that it is principalities in high places that are coming down i see you will i literally see prisoners behind bar i don't even behind bars i don't even know if this will even literally translate to even prison ministry you will go in but i see you setting the captives free you are called for this the sword has been given to you you carry this sword man of god and i speak now the doors of the nations as they open you will go in you will uproot those things some of these things are old ancient stubborn things the lord says but some 24 i speak as you go the gates will lift because the king of glory goes in and the king of glory comes in you are called for regions man of god you carry this anointing i also see it's almost like a retreat i i i, I see land it's like a ranch 
property and acres of land being released to you and it will be utilized part of what this will be is like a retreat where where many there'll be a bit of rehab going going on uh, 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 it'll be a retreat it, it will be a safe place you are called to be a safe place for many people will come and receive healing the nations will come and receive healing so i just pray god in your timing that this property that i'm seeing in the realms of the spirit this acres of vast and wide land be released to this man of god you will send the right support you will send the right uh, teams in those times and places where you've been misunderstood many do not understand where you uh, what you carry where you've been misunderstood and where you've not e even not been accepted certain times Not now, says the Lord, I will launch you and I will cause even those ones who question to see. You are accepted of me and by me. You are my son. And as a son, you have an inheritance. I am going to launch you. This reward is coming directly from my hand, says the Lord, not the hand of man. You are going to be known just like the Lord said to Abraham, I will make your name great. You've never asked for these things, but I literally see your name in lights and the Lord says, I will make your name great for my glory. As you go forth boldly to set the captives free. So I decree and declare that these regions that you're assigned to will be yours in the name of Jesus. The people, the demographic people, people that you're assigned to, oh, will find you, will flock to you. There, man of God, I don't know what this means. There are also there are also people who will relocate to you. They will relocate to you. The Lord will send them to where you are. There will be physical, geographical relocations. People will come to support you. People will come to see you. People come will come to visit you. Just like how people touch the, the hem of the garment and, 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 and they were transformed. This is going to happen with you. Atmosphere changer. Yeah. God bless you in the name of Jesus. And I thank God for your life and for your story and for the journey you relentlessly went through nobody knows nobody sees everything that you relentlessly faithfully stewarded but the lord says now you're going to see the fruit of that things are culminating and it is going to make sense so i bless you in the name of jesus how can you add to that? I mean, I, I, I keep seeing the locksmith. When I look at Prophet Wilmar, Dr. Premal, I see the locksmith. And I just see the Lord walking up. I just see the Lord walking up and just adding keys. And one of the keys I just saw him add was evangelism. And he, he reminded me what came out of my mouth the other night. Unusual pulpits. Amen. And I see you even doing, the Lord's going to open your eye to ministry opportunities. I, I see uh, jail ministry even. But that's not everything, but I, I see unusual pulpits. God's going to turn you into a pulpit wherever you're at. He's adding the key rings on right now, and keys set folks free. Amen. They open doors, and they unlock chains to also. So understand the locksmith, because I sense God is preparing you, not only as a mechanic. <laughs> wow, well, I, I put a lot of titles on you today, <laughs> but uh, just, just, just re receive that by faith. Dr. Premla gave you 99% of the word right there. That was, I was hearing about Dr. Premla, as you were probably saying, I was hearing something for you. It's just a little feedback on one of your lines there. As tired old Dan gets into the spirit. The Lord was showing me while you were talking to Prophet Wilmar, taking me back into this story of Nehemiah. And he wanted me to say, tell her, Dan, to, to beware of the sand balance that Tobias and Magesh. There's the enemy's going to try to use distractions now to get you off of the wall. And he's even going to use things that look attractive to you in the natural. He's even going to use influential people, or people yeah. that look attracting to you. He's even going to use ministry things to try to get you away from the mandate. But he's but the Lord's just saying, understand, you're right where you need to be now. You're you're working on the wall. And he says, everything it's gonna spin, all those things that you would be tempted to come down off of the wall and go uh, pursue, he says they're all gonna come out of what 
you're doing on the wall anyway. They're all going to come out of this. And I, I, I just can't see him saying, don't allow yourself to be talked down off the wall in this yes. hour. And I see you too have an un, a, unusual, but a strategic pulpit as well. Lord's going to put you in front of kings. He's going to put you in front of people, amazing people. It's an unusual pulpit right there. You're a walking pulpit, whether you know it or not. And God's using you through the mechanism of business, through the sphere of business influence. And he's going to use it as a ministry. You know, this is your ministry is nothing that could ever be contained within four walls. He's just saying, daughter, this is the hour for you too to walk watching for the enemies to formed formed his plans to try to, to trip you up, to try mm. to stop you. Not be, because he sees the impact and the threat that you are to him and the impact you'll make for me. So the Lord says, this is an hour to walk watching, beloved. Walk watching. And even when you feel that, that temptation or that sense to, to try to change and do something, the Lord says, don't understand. Don't change what you're doing. I'm not changing what you're doing, but the Lord says, you're going to see things begin to accelerate and even begin to look differently this year. But the Lord says, but understand, I'm not changing anything I'm doing. I'm only enhancing it. I'm only expanding it. Jabez, do you understand? I'm enlarging you. I'm not changing what I'm doing. I'm enlarging you for you to make not just a little splash, but a greater impact. Kababa, in the places I strategically sent you. Yeah, my pulpit in the wilderness. My strategic pulpit in the place where the church has it went. My strategic pulpit. Come on. You'll be surprised where I plant your feet. Jesus. And how, where I put your voice. You'll be surprised at, at the people you look up and see that stand before you. And you'll think, just like them, how did I get here? And, those, and you'll think, how did they get here in front of me? I know this isn't just a coincidence. Yes, yeah, God is up to something. Yeah, you're my pulpit. Yeah, pulpits were made for preachers to preach from. And the Lord says, I'm going to come on. you a strategic pulpit. Your life is a strategic pulpit, but I'm going to put a roar inside of you mouth and you're going to begin to decree and declare and they said jesus they're going to even see as much as they hear come out of your mouth because the lord said, you too i are one that i have polished you've allowed me to polish not only to form but to polish and the lord says it's the shine of my glory that they're going to see in as much as even before the, the the words that come out of your mouth that i speak through you yes understand you are I never were meant to fit in, beloved. Yeah. Jesus, you yes. felt that rejection. You felt that alienation. Jesus. But you know what? You weren't supposed to fit in. Matter of fact, if I'd have let you fit in, you'd have missed. Mm. You'd have missed the greater and settle for just the average. Mm. It's Come on. Inferior when I even had the had the superior plan for you all along. But beloved, you made a choice. You paid the price. You decided to walk the long road. Let's travel. Instead of go into that road of popularity and acceptance, you chose to walk my path. Take my path. And now the Lord says, come on. These years later, it's getting ready to pay huge dividends. Watch, Jabez. Watch. I'm not changing anything I'm doing because I've been the one doing it all along. <laughs> I'm not changing anything, Jabez. I'm getting ready to enlarge it. Just watch. Just watch. And yeah, I see. I see on this. The Lord was showing me on this thread. The women are getting ready to roar into a revival. That's really going to be the spark of the next move of God. They say it's the youth and young people. No, it's the women. The women. It's the are women. Mm -hmm. Like wildfire. Like they're going to take off. The Lord showed me that you'll be one of the. There'll be many women that are even on this broadcast that'll preach at conferences in churches, big and small, and, and, and there'll be pulpits too. But yes, Jesus, that you'll be training and teaching up business entrepreneurs in the church because the God says, I'm going to multiply. The Lord says, I'm not only going to multiply you, my beloved, <laughs> but I'm he, he calls you his lily. I don't know if that means anything to you. You're his lily. He says, I'm not only going to multiply you, beloved, personally, but I'm going to multiply through you. And I'm going to use you and I'm going to cause you to reproduce after 
your own kind. I'm going to cause you to reproduce this very thing that I've called you to do. Don't let yourself be talked down off the wall. Kalaba Nehemiah, Kalaba Sata. The work is done, and I'll bring those around you. Yes, you'll teach them to work with one hand and have a sword and weapon in the other. But yes, yes, Nehemiah, don't come down off the wall, even if they come giving you a false prophecy, even if they come and show you something more. Even if there's a great need, the Lord says you would look at them and say, why should I come down off the wall and Jesus. help you and allow the work to cease? <laughs> Listen carefully to that story in Nehemiah. But Jesus. understand, Kalababasata, because you've been faithful, beloved, get ready for expansion in this year. It's going to accelerate so fast. And you're, because you're, you're, it's going to move so fast, you're going to feel like it's something different. But the Lord says it's not some, anything different at all. I'm not changing what I'm doing at all. Because the Lord says, I have a plan and I have a purpose. And the Lord says, this is the season to get in sync, to get in step with what I'm doing in this plan. Yeah, don't you, didn't you read my word? I know the plans that I have for you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord. And I said, it's time for you, says the Spirit of God, to get in total, complete compliance with those very plans because you gave me your yes. And that's all I needed, the authorization I needed. And now watch, beloved, watch what I do to you and watch what I do through you. Watch, watch. I'll not only put you into the broad place of blessing, I'll expand and multiply everything you Thank do. You, Jesus. Uh -huh. And I'll get Thank the glory you, as my kingdom will grow as you Go forth and go in Jesus' name. Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch touch her right now, Dr. Prema. Touch her right now in Jesus' name and touch her mother, too, that's watching out here. Fire upon her in Jesus' name. Fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire in Jesus' name. I just see the Lord just doing a rejuvenation, a refreshing in, in yes. the, yes, right now in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. You are so powerful. We're, we're quarter to midnight here in Central Florida. Uh, but I just pray tonight that that you were encountered by God, that you were blessed, you know, and and so into these guys, please. They're powerful. They're 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 you're gonna get blessed, believe me, when you sow into these two. And and just do it. Contact them, uh, whatever, if they have a giving information. I, Maybe Wilmar will post it one more time. I probably lost it. This this was a challenge to come up tonight in my tiredness. And 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 I'm just so happy that we had such a big crowd tonight. And I know they didn't come out to see me. And they came out to see you too, but mainly to come out to, to see the Lord. And that's all I care. Amen. I just like hanging around. I just hanging around the presence of God. There's something about it. You know, I when I was young and serving the men of God, I just hung around them. Got to carry their Bible, grabbed their water helped them, you know, and what happened? <laughs> Amen. I just, and I still am that way. I just love hanging around the people of God. Believe me, these two are powerful and I don't, I'm free of comparison and all that, but I still, I love the people and, and, and like Paul says, I feel like I'm the least compared to all these, these people here. And there's so many gifted ministers I get to meet um, through, the, through this technology of media here that I wouldn't normally meet. So I'm very thankful not only for my new computer for Christmas, I don't have a Santa Claus. I have a Jesus Claus, and it's Christmas every day, and it's blessings all the time. I'm blessed with everything. I don't have to beg him. I just, hey, listen, I go do this and this, and God's given me a, a, a pulpit to the world. We're talking about pulpits here. This computer is a pulpit to the world. After years and years of being in the four walls and doing three services a week, and, and, and all the ministry and serving and prophetic teams and all the stuff. I did, now I can utilize this technology to be a voice of God. Let him speak through me, yes. through me, touch through me, and release him as I represent Jesus to the world. And I just am grateful for the honor to even be here. If you knew my testimony, she was talking about Wilmar, prophesying about Wilmar's past. <laughs> my past, it could be a movie. So listen, I'm just thankful to be here. And I'm thinking because it's Jesus that got me here. And it's the same Jesus that's going to get me to the finish line. Amen. And then when I punch out of here, I'm going to get to see mama again. Kind of miss her. Uh, I lost her in May. Yeah. My praying mama. And I'm boy, I'm going to give her a big old Holy Ghost hug. Man, thank you for not giving up on me. You know, the, the fighting through that pile of beer cans and that fog of smoke to, to 
preach the gospel to my brothers and my dad and his friends. And there's many people. I remember coming down as a kid, seeing them all coming in, the power of God hitting them. <laughs> in a cloud of smoke and pile of beer cans. My mom, she she uh, represented Christ. She not only was a praying mama, but she went out and she let her, you know, she took a lot of persecution, but she released Jesus. And a lot of people in heaven because of my mom's impact. See, you Come are on. making an impact too, ladies and gentlemen, whether you know it or not. And if I don't tell you, and if these two don't tell you, somebody out there is going to tell you eventually, you are <laughs> impact whether small or large, you're here. And uh, so understand, understand that you are here for such a time as this and that God's going to use you to be the, the one that wins your family or maybe the one that wins many. Amen. And Dr. Premla, mm -hmm. win souls in the business sphere of influence. And, and, and Walmart here will win souls out in the, maybe in the street ministry or in the evangelism or in the, in the jailhouse mm -hmm. or, or out here in the other sectors where Dr. Premel and I can't get to. See, we're all one instrument in the beautiful divine orchestra of God. We're playing, but we're making the same sound. Amen. And all our instruments come together and we release a sound to this world here, a dark and shaky world right now that is looking for answers. We happen to have the answer. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, guys, have a good evening. Uh, I'm going to go get some sleep. I got to work in the morning. And uh, I, I just I just hope we can get together again really soon, like in the next few months. I just think it's powerful. I, I, and I think we'll, we'll do a lot more. We'll do some prophetic ministry as the spirit leads. And uh, we'll, we'll, if you didn't get a word tonight, well, these guys will come back. So no worry. Your your time, your time will come if you did. I've been that person that went away sad because I didn't get a word, you know. And maybe the word was I need to go to the word himself and get the word, right? Come maybe, on. Maybe, maybe he was just trying to sell me, Dan, it's not that you're not special. You're really very special. I just wanted to give you that word myself. I just wanted to whisper it into your ear myself and tell you I loved you and tell you this and tell you that. And I was good. Instead of you sit going online and getting it from somebody, you know, I wanted to personally give you that word. So if you didn't get a word tonight, listen, just go hang out with Jesus. He can whisper it right in your ear for you. Amen. And he'll give you a very accurate word. We Bible says we prophesy in part, but he give you the he give you the part and the he give you the filling and the crust. He give you everything. The whole enchilada. When you the whole enchilada <laughs> when you hear it right from the master's mouth. Amen. Let him whisper it in your ear. Listen, this is the focus. It's not about getting words, it's about getting encountered by the word, and then your life gets changed. Yes. Forever and ever. And you're in love with Jesus. Amen. <laughs> because he's not mad at you. He's mad about you. <laughs> hey, and mad for you, yeah. He's mad of love with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Mark of Love Ministries, yeah. right? Say he, they, this is, yes. This is what uh, Mr. Fip Wilmar is all about here. Prophet Wilmar is Mark of Love. And uh, they're, I to just, love. Love, love the unlovable, love the lovable, love those who do not know love. Mm. Just love. And every day I'm learning how to love because it, without love, we're a resounding symbol. Uh, Prophet Dan, can I release the word to Prophetess uh, Premla? Can yeah, I, go, before we go? Yes, go ahead. We got about nine minutes. Go ahead. I, I hear the Lord say, you are a Deborah. I see you as a Deborah, a mother in Israel, and I see this commander anointing on you. God is giving you an army, and you're a commander in Israel, and God has called you. There's a general anointing. I see this apostolic grace as well on you. Yes, the, there's the Nehemiah, but I see the prophetic and the, the apostle as well, and God has been shifting you, and God has been training you, but I also see even behind you, I see that flower, and God's been speaking. I kept hearing the word blossom. It's time for you to blossom. You were a flower and you had thorns, but God has removed those thorns. And now you're that flower that he's lifting up and he's putting on display. This would be a year that the Lord's going to start to remove the veil and you're coming out of hiding behind the scenes. Just like Esther, she was hidden in the, behind the scenes, but God's calling you forth for such a time as this. You'll no longer be a hidden one, but you'll be a revealed one. Hear the Lord say, you will no longer be a hidden one. You will be a revealed one. The Lord is revealing you. The Lord's bringing you out and God's going to bring some divine connections to you and I see people who've been traveling to help you build the vision that he's given to you because his hand is upon you and God has not forgotten about those things that you have even thought in your mind. God knows the thoughts that he has towards you, but he also knows the thoughts you've been thinking. There's some things you haven't even prayed 
out with your mouth, but you thought in your mind and the Lord has heard those prayers because he knows those thoughts. He discerns the heart and he discerns the thoughts and he knows what those thoughts that you prayed about. There's certain things concerning family and certain things concerning ministry and God has not forgotten about these things. But I also see this, uh, this author anointing on you. I don't know if you've written your book, but I released the grace on you to even if you've written a book to write even more books. Uh, I released the grace upon you to have the, the tongue of the ready writer that you're not just going to have the tongue but you're going to have the penmanship you're going to have a golden pen to be able to write uh, from the heart and the mind and the counsel of God uh, is a scribal anointing you're going to be a prophetic scribe to write these things uh, even concerning the women I see this Miriam anointing as well to lead women into worship to lead women to lead the women I see this Miriam anointing who led the women into worship through dance and, and to praise and I see the hand upon you at the Lord Lord's raising you up, and there is an anointing on your life. I see the, the word says in Jeremiah 23, 29, is that my word like a fire and like a hammer that break the rock to pieces? And I see you as a hammer to break rock to pieces. The hardest of hearts are going to break to pieces, and God's going to give people new hearts like Ezekiel eleven nineteen. 19. He says, I remove that old heart of stone, and I'll give them a heart of flesh, and I'll renew them a new spirit, and they'll be my people. They'll follow my statutes and my laws, and I see this anointing to break the hardest of hearts, even with, when, when you're even speaking or you're whispering or you're being soft-spoken. You're not going to make your voice be known in the streets uh, and a smoldering wick. You will not uh, 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 snuff out uh, because God has called you and he's given you a voice that's an authority in your voice. Yes, there's a roar there's a roar, but there's a meekness to you. There's a meekness to you, even like Moses. I see this meekness to you, meek at heart, a lowly spirit. And I see this meek, meekness that God has given to you because you know who you are and you know to whom you belong. And the hand of God is upon you. And I see, yes, there's a market thing to you. And you're gonna, God's going to connect you with people in the marketplace. I see business entrepreneurs coming to you. I see people in the government that are going to come to you. Kings are going to rise before you and, and prince are going to bow before you like in the book of I, uh, Isaiah I see you ministering to people of high uh affluence, not just influence, but affluence, wealth. Uh, and, and I see people, are, God's going to release people because God has called you to be a kingdom investor, but the Lord's going to send people also to invest in you. Because I, I see you're not just going to be one an, an employer for someone else or have a small business or a big business. You're going to be an investor. And you're the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. You're the lender, not the borrower. And I see the hand that has got, come upon you, and I see the favor of God. And it, it says a good name is better than silver and gold, and I see the good name the reputation that you have before the Lord and God's opening doors and God's bringing people even concerning this, this property. I see this property. I see this building you've been praying about. God's releasing the finances for this place of adoration and equipping center. I hear the word equipping center. It's not a church, but it's an equipping center. It's a place to train my people to prepare my prophets uh, to prepare the fivefold, the apostle, prophet, teacher, and evangelist. And I see this grace to even be a trainer of the fivefold that God has given to you to train up the people in the things that, that God has called them to, to be in the unity of the faith and, and coming into the, the speaking the truth and love. And I see you training and equipping and sending and commissioning people out to, like an apostle commissioning and sending them out. Yes, the prophet is, is on you, but I see this apostolic grace on you, apostolic and prophetic grace that is on you to build up not just the places, but people as well. But you're going to be building uh, there's going to be different centers. And not just in Malaysia, but other countries. God's going to open up doors to go even to other countries as well. And and, and I even released, I, I, I don't know if that country has a visa, but I even released a visa. If there's anything that's hold, holding you back from traveling, I pray for those papers to be released. Even that angels are hearkening to the voice, the, the word that's coming out that God sends his angels right now to start moving on your behalf. And God says there's also a grace on your life to move with angels. God says there's a, there's a commanding anointing and grace for angels to move through the words that come out of your mouth. Angels are hearkening to the voice, but the Lord sends. He's the, he's the commander of the angels. He's the, the Lord of hosts. Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. But angels are going to be moving in the, in, in the ministry of angels are, are going to be flowing 
and they're going to be ministering through you, ministering angels and flames of fire that brings people to the air of salvation. I see you moving in healing and in miracles as well as angels are going to be moving even in services because the glory of God is upon you, woman of God. And you go from glory to glory to uh, glory, to glory, glory to honor to honor. But last thing I'll say is in the book of Ezekiel, it talks about how the river started at the ankle, the knee deep, and I see it at the waist deep. And God's going to bring it all the way for, um, from over your head. The glory is going to be on you that you go into a place and you guess you are also an atmosphere shifter, uh, just like Samuel and just like Moses, that when Moses will lead, the glory will go with him. And just like Samuel, wherever he went, people will start to prophesy. Like Saul began to prophesy in the company of the prophets. And I see this prophetic uh, atmosphere as well. You carry a prophetic atmosphere as well uh, to, to release the prophetic wherever you go even people who may not even prophesy a lick in their life they're going to start to prophesy in jesus name jesus wow, wow. I, I just want to quickly there's so many things i can say to confirm you know uh, uh, what prophet wilma and even prophet dan you released to me but i'm just going to say just just one thing we're actually in prayer about uh starting an apostolic training center the lord has shown us the location so uh, i'm just so thankful to the lord and i'm thankful to, to both of you of, of, of you know for releasing huh, the mind of christ to me thank you for for blessing me god is so good yeah more so you guys hey that word to you were from him was so good that look i caught on fire look at that see <laughs> but see now i've got my new computer my dream came true and now i've i i can start having better backgrounds and things but you know um to be honest with you there, I, i'm just this is just me right here I'm just the old home Dan right here, <laughs> homeboy, amen, old school, but I'll be 62 on the 12th, so don't forget my birthday, okay, uh, <laughs> make all checks payable to Dan's Bahama vacation, fun. no, I'm just kidding, <laughs> but I'll be, I'll be a recycled teenager officially on February 12th, my wife has a birthday at the end of the month, so pray for me that I don't forget, otherwise I might have to move in with you, but uh, seriously, <laughs> yeah, we got our birthdays right together, so uh, keep us in prayer as we progress in age and and I, I fight challenges and things that I don't even talk about um, the freezing up of my hand and things and I'm just I'm just breaking the curses of infirmity of arthritis whatever it is that's trying to freeze my hand I'm just listen God's not done with me it's only just beginning amen he saved the best wine for last and I'm not retiring maybe in the natural so I can do the Lord's work all the time I'm not retiring in the spiritual I'm refiring amen and I, I'm, it's, I'm going to just going to get gooder and gooder as the Lord empowers me. And as I continue to show up and do the best I can for him, he's not looking for my ability. He's only looking for my availability. And uh, I just trust that he's going to do the rest. And listen, look how great God has done. He brought me these two powerful ministers here. And uh, did you get blessed tonight? Just raise your hand out there. Say, yeah, I did. I did. And uh, I did as well. So here's one hand up right here. And uh, go ahead and sow into their ministries, contact them. And if you can't sow, you know, pray, pray for them. You know, they, they get up and go to work like you do and you and I do. And they are faced with all kinds of challenges. And uh, so just remember them in prayer. If God puts on your heart, send them a little gift. And hey, listen, he'll he'll multiply it back to you in so many ways. Because, hey, these two are God's kids, son and daughter. And, you know, when you when you when you. Give to the master's kids. The master always makes sure he multiplies your seed sown back to you in ways that you don't even understand, even more than money. Sometimes, Dr. Premla and Wilma, favor is even more than money. Yes. You know, think, you, you know, you can have a lot of bucks, but then one person can change everything for you. Mm -hmm. and you have a worldwide ministry. One open door, meeting the one right person, meeting just running into that Boaz. You're not going to have to walk through looking for the leftover barley loaves laying in the field anymore. You, you'll be gleaning from fields that you own. Amen. Because God can put you position that Boaz right in front of you. I'm prophesying to somebody I'm right, right in front of you and change your life in one instance. It just takes yeah. Boaz to change your circumstance and, to, and, and, and turn your bitter and turn it into something much better. Amen. Because, you know, Ruth, she, she left there. She had lost her husband and kids. And then she said, I'm going to name myself, rename myself Mara, which means bitter. I'm going to, but see when Boaz came along, God strategically put him there and he, he took Mara bitter and made her 
better and greater. And I believe that's what he's going to do to you. Look at Tina. She said, yep, I'm looking for my Boaz too. You're looking, is he tall, dark, and handsome? I mean, what, what do you mean? But anyway, God, we're talking about favor and how God strategically puts people in your life, Tina. And I, I hope uh, the right person comes along in your life, uh, with, no matter what the case may be. Amen. Um, we just, we just uh, thank the Lord tonight for this powerful broadcast. Guys, good morning for us. We're just two minutes past midnight. Dr. Pema, have a blessed day. You're going out and, and, and doing things that you have planned to do. And uh, I'm thankful that uh, you not only have your agenda, but God's agenda in mind. And I believe he's going to bless you every step of the way. So thank you so much. We love you. Hugs from Florida here. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye. 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 God bless. Amen. Oh, I'm too quick on the trigger there. But Wilmar, thank you very much, sir. Have a good evening. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the program. Ran a little late tonight. We got to visiting. But you know what? Uh, I hope you were blessed to have 24 people on. We had we had a lot of people on tonight, and I'm I'm just tickled that you that this all worked out nice, and that uh, it was a blessing to many people. Pioneer Ministries goes all week long, day and night, has money programs on there, uh, just the kind of program that might suit you, and uh, you know in the flavor that you that you are looking for, and uh, in ministry, and uh, you can get prayer anytime. Uh, connect with Jennifer Butler or people on the prayer team at Pioneer. We're committed. We're here to serve you online at Pioneer Ministries Monday, every day. I mean, from Sunday morning right on to this program and many more programs the rest of the week, day and night. There's a variety um, of multifaceted ministries that are here just to be an encouragement and a blessing to you. So God bless you. We have a great, great program next week. I got uh, Prophet Danny Mowry and with Nick Sierra is going to come with some music, and we're just going to get in the presence of God uh, through praise and worship. And Daddy Maori is going to just bring a fresh word from the throne. So I look forward to being here next Monday night at 9 Eastern Standard Time. Thank you, Deb, so much. Susan, my neighbor, we got to get together sometime. You and the hubby there and uh, fellowship. Um, Amen. Amen. Uh, Brenda Metz, thank you so much for coming on. Suzella, be refreshed in Jesus' name. Prophetess Stephanie, all the way from Ottawa, Balmy, Ottawa, Canada. I will not tell you that it was 70 degrees today, uh, so I don't want you to feel. <laughs> I know it's probably 30 degrees there in Ottawa, but that's pretty normal for wintertime. And uh, and Said and Sarah Padron, God bless you, woman of God, dear friend. And everybody else out there, thank you for coming on tonight. And uh, I just want to tell you that I love you, but take it to the bank. You serve a God that loves you more than you can understand. And according to Psalms 139, he can't stop thinking about you.